I'm all jacked up on Mountain Dew. <laughs> I love that. Welcome on to episode 14 of Five Star Souls. It's a very special episode with a very special guest coming up a bit later on. Uh, but for now, Nick, Al, how are you doing? What's going on, mate? Oh, I like that. <laughs> See, man, I've been, I've been rehearsing all week for that. Working on I've lost Nick already. Just oh, after Nick's disappeared. What's going on here? He was psyched out, by, he was psyched out by my intro. Uh-huh, you're back, you're back. He put well, 50 be in that internet mirror. Um, what's happening? How are you guys? Chilling, man. Same as. Yeah, what have you been up to? Yeah, not much. Man, well, I can never think, man. It just the whole the week vibe just right now just seems, yeah, it just seems like light. That's the highlight of the week, obviously. Every day yeah. feels like a week and every week feels like a day. Uh, That's, yeah, been, That's a storm. I've, Get that run. I've been vaccinated. That's what's been happening. You do look vaccinated. Yeah, you do. How, how was it? It was like any other flu job. In terms of like, it was just my thing I've is always like the jabs. I don't know. It's 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 the jag aspect of it is, feels it's nothing. But the although they they always ask me anytime I get a jag that flu jab because I get them. Uh, what arm do you want it on? And I always say my left arm because I always think, well, oh, I'll use my right arm more. In case I need to fight somebody in the way out. For what? It's not like I'm writing, <laughs> writing, writing poetry Pumping or something. the jab, man. <laughs> Pumping and actually, jab you, get, you, get that, you get that left arm done, and as soon as you go to the car, you're like, that's my gear stick, that's my handbrake. <laughs> like, talk, talk actually, the probably autos, use, probably, probably use the left arm more. But the, um, no, I was fine. I mean, I was kind of like, I will say. You I know, flowed afterwards. I had flu like symptoms, I. Eh? It was, uh, yeah. and it was, and I don't really don't really have the flu very often so it kind of felt rubbish but the small price to pay to be vaccinated invincible and essentially <laughs> and uh, have my brain controlled by the government Aye. how how long is it before you uh, get your second one and then how long after that is it until bill gates sends you over to him yeah i don't i actually don't know they didn't tell me at the place i think it's just uh within the next 10 weeks 12 weeks someone is that right so I think it's 12 it? weeks you've got to get on. I don't know if they'd give me a day. You need to get it within 12 weeks. No. Yeah. Is that right? But it's even... Uh, uh, so my, my dad got it and they gave him like... They gave him a, a piece of paper straight away saying, yo, this your this your next one. So I think I, like at the time the GPs were... If you got it... if uh, Your dad's obviously an older and if uh, so GPs had a control of it, if you know what I mean. They, so they're like putting you in the mm. diary like... Whereas yeah. the thing I went to is like... You got it done at like the back of the shops. I got it done in a gym hall. Do you know what I mean? It was like, and it was like, kind of mobbed. So it was you weird, you getting buckets? No. <laughs> I got a bucket, I went. But the, uh, it was funny because the guy said, don't, uh, he was like, don't drive for 10 minutes. And I was like, why did you not, like, why would they not say on the thing, you might not want to drive to us? I was just thinking about all these people that drove their cars down and just had to like plaid and leave my car. <laughs> In the car park with dead arms for 15 minutes. Just need to walk home with this dead arm. Maybe was in the car park. It was fine. Big episode today. Uh, later on, we're going to be we're going to be playing uh, the the wee interview that we recorded with Seamus from McDeads. Um, after we slated his original football special, he's he's brought brought us the the glass bottle original McDeads. So I mean, everybody's got that to look forward to and see if that if that can even get anywhere near the lofty heights. It's a wee bit of a it's a wee bit of a it's a bit of a soda rock star. He was Isn't it like this because the the they're at this kind of small independent company cranking out absolute like money stuff, and then we're going to speak to the guy, the 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 El Capitan, the fourth generation Capitan. It, it was, I mean, unbelievable. Like it was, it was class. There was just so much, so many stories that came out of him, and clearly he was just as passionate about sodas as we are. I mean, not to give away anything because it, it like. It was a good interview, and if you're really keen, if you're if you're only here for the football special interview, I, I, I don't. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna force you to listen to this for the next three soft drinks. But it's well worth your time to go and hear about the history of McDade's, and also, uh, I mean, I'd be happy to call me Mister Seamus McDade. Uh, maybe like the, you know, the four uh, the three Musketeers have an actual fourth member kind of thing. Yeah. Like I could, just, I could see him coming back on a show to deep dive with some on more any, drinks. 
time we mentioned like a Fra Jury or a Neil Evans friend of the podcast, Fra Jury, friend, friend of the, of the podcast. podcast, friend of the podcast, Seamus McDade. Let me say this right. I'll give you a spoiler, just a quick spoiler to get you you get your appetite up. Seamus actually said uh, at one point that he visits Glasgow often. You might you might so see him. He might bump into him. It say maybe a live show that might happen sometime in the future. Yeah. Well, if there's one thing that I took away from the interview is. We need to get a night out with that guy, man. <laughs> yes, yeah, definitely. That'll uh, be carnage. Aye, talking about live shows, actually, I had some conversations today about maybe securing as a wee venue to get that live show up and running because we'll have a, a seated show, a bit of a, it's not exactly going to be like a nightclub or a live music thing. So, I mean, we may be able to get these events out before any other events happen. Um, so so keep, keep your eye on our social media channels for that. We'll be announcing something pretty soon, hopefully. Bring your own hip flask. <laughs> we will be supplying the drinks we'll be supplying the drinks don't worry about that um, I so Seamus McDade there you go hey, talking of drinks do you want to just dive right in this is bang one oh, out yeah. let's uh, will I go first I think, I think you're going to go first Nick I'll caveat this I like to say caveat I also like to say sidebar but I'll caveat this by saying caveat hey. this with a sidebar my mum said to me the other day uh, Jim loves every time every time Jim gets a shout out it's not even a shout out I just mentioned his name in passing because I know he watches <laughs> he'll the my mum show us another shout out it's another <laughs> shout out he's like it's three shout outs in three weeks it's like tallying them up but I don't, I don't even know if he's listening because every time I mention him it's because I used to steal stuff for the garage <laughs> and give them out my mates but anyway now that I'm fessing up another one that I would steal for Jim would be look as it energy now I and think I think you're bringing this because you 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 had the the vaccination you weren't feeling too well and you're like this is what you have when you're not feeling too well. I, I'll be honest, I wanted to buy the orange one, and I thought it would I would be in a mess to not get the original first. The other thing that is kind of interesting about Lucas Eight Energy is that I wanted to bring on to have this out with you guys is that. I was very against not doing energy drinks. But when I say energy drinks, I'm always thinking of like Monster, Red Bull, like these kind of like, what's that horrible one called? Like the, they used to have the... Rockstar? No, it's in a white can. How do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, MTV Relent- Pussy? Relentless. I just wanted to throw something to say. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, the, the, the white uh, pussy can. But the... Um, but the mad like, thing is that used to be thingied by MTV. MTV no, I know, but, you, but you, I always also thought about the sausage water stuff as well. And uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I was kind of thinking after that, I was like, well, I don't really consider like the energy an energy drink. I and it's I also think the caffeine does. energy drink that all of those and other I, ones are. And but I just also I, think I, like I, the fact that it's in a three thirty. Well, the fact that it says it's in a three thirty can also makes me think they don't think of it as that. Aye, but this is old school though. This is pre yeah, Red Bull way of delivering energy, quote unquote, through a, a drink. Yeah, I but think. This, so. aye, this isn't this isn't your caffeine, taurine. This is glucose, sugar, make me feel a wee bit better when you're losing fluids. Kind of vibes. See I mean, when I see the word glucose, do you know what I think of? Which is weird. There was a, I want to say there was a Boost chocolate bar that also had glucose in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I do yeah, remember that. Quite yeah, know, it's a, sim- it's a, I think it's a similar, <laughs> similar kind of vibe, but I just mean, I remember hanging with like, what is, <laughs> can I just, do you remember you used to, used to get this in pharmacies and it'd be in the tall, hard plastic yep. bottle um, and it had the yeah. kind of cellophane, the yellow cellophane around it. That's it. That's right. Let yeah. me just run this down, I'll be, I'll be real quick with this guy, just to get in touch on that pharmaceutical side. Soft drink manufactured by a Japanese company, Suntory. Oh, interesting. Suntory. So I'm assuming it's the whiskey, guys. And it was originally called Glucosade. Now that's better. Glucosade. And then it was acquired by British pharmaceutical company Beecham's in 1938 and then sold wow. as Glucosade, right. an energy drink for when you're sick. See, the one I would say, I drink Glucosade Sport quite a lot. Like that that would be, I'd sip that with my, my dinner. Well, you really? are. You yeah. get in buckets a lot. You get buckets. <laughs> I, I'm I'm swishing net. Yeah, no, no forgetting buckets. Oh, I want to say, but uh, that, that was a good number crunch you came up with. There. Um, the, the the thing that's kind of weird that you have, like, is it sport your dinner? No, 
I was going to say that Lucasaid really reminds me of like if it's not in this sort of original can kind of vibe or like the ball, the orange, it always kind of it's always like kind of like hangover y kind of vibes. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Try and make yeah. you feel better that injection of sugar, but, but the other thing, like I said, reminds me of is playing hockey, which we've mentioned yeah, yeah, yeah. many times. But like, uh, look at the sport of the hockey was like a goal, it was like a it was like a people would have that instead of a ball. Do you know what I mean? Remember what ball the little carton, the little pouchy carton with I the, remember that, yeah, 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 with the wee orange to- snip. I used to make my own Lucasade sport, and it was one of the guys we we the nutritionist that played in one of our teams, yeah. and it was water diluting orange. Salt and sugar. Sugar. Someone told him. And that, that, that was it. And it was, I just filled my water bottle with that. It was dynamite. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's Who told you that? I, like when I played the, uh, the Buccaneers at the recce team, one of the, one, it was a girl that, that, that played on the team. I you were talking about Horace. And I was like, Horace is like a masseuse. <laughs> I'm like, don't listen to him, man. <laughs> no, like, no, I was like, way back, way back. Horace is like the <laughs> seven foot Canadian. Brick house. I can just imagine him going, Hey Andy, this is what you want to do. You want to get yourself some <laughs> orange juice. You thought, you thought Jimmy Allen was telling me he's like fucking Yo, juice. Jimmy Allen, by the way, shout out Jimmy Allen. He was the guy that gave me a he he used to slip <laughs> sounds crazy. He used to slip me a <laughs> look as a he would slip <laughs> he would slip me look as a tablets. It was one of them. If, if you fall asleep in the back of the morning, no, let me tell you, here's, here's, here's the first true sidebar. You'll love this. Hockey fans, pay, I mean, if you're not a hockey fan, pay attention so you don't lose out in the story, right? <laughs> and in ice hockey, there's five players and a goalie on the ice in each side. And that's made up of three forward players and two defenders. Now, just these fast forward this, I played for Paisley. Paisley's biggest rival was. Kirkcaldy, or just known as Fife, as if like the whole of Fife played at Kirkcaldy. <laughs> we are playing in Kirkcaldy. It is a sort of like top two in the league playing against each other. We'd won all our games, they'd won all their games. This is the first game against each other. And depending on the way the league would work, usually you might only get one game against each other. So it was kind of like we knew that it was, just a, it was a must win. Our coach couldn't make the game. <laughs> we are down by two goals to five, and the, the the parents of Paisley were notorious for like just being animals. So they're all <laughs> screaming, they're all shouting. My dad is like, uh, like kind of being like the bench manager. He's like making sure everyone's got their water bottles, their look at his, make sure everyone's cool. Jimmy Allen, old Jimmy Allen, who's essentially the substitute teacher here, is taking the taking the bench. And he's like, half ah, chain out, this guy out, this guy out, everyone out. We're all we're all we're all on the ice and we all look around each other and I'm like shouting back to the bench going, Jimmy, there's five defenders on and we're on a power play and we're down by two goals. So we have like more they have three players on, we've got five, and all our all our forwards are on the bench. And he's like, ah, I'll tell you who's a forward and who isn't he. You guys are on, man. We're not losing the game. But, the, <laughs> but it's just this point of like me shouting at my dad and shouting at Jimmy Allen going please do something. <laughs> like, it was like, we felt, I just felt stranded. And I even yeah. think that game, I still got a look at it sweetie off him. He would pam <laughs> to me. He would like, take one for the next period. That was, it's weirdly just talking about hockey. Like there was a random Paisley Facebook page, put up loads of old hockey photos and I, I wee swatched myself with the curtains eh, on, on the team photos and some of them. So that was a wee bit of a throwback, a wee bit of nostalgia. But anyway, let's get back to some nostalgia. Let's get in. Get into this. Spark get it. In. Sliding down. I'm glad the energy I have original. Really bad memories of the I other, th- you know, the other bottle that the the Lucasaid orange comes in, the tall bottle with a really wide rim. Yep. Yeah. So that's a Off very aggressively carbonated drink, as I'm sure this is. Yeah. And I remember having a bottle when they work. I was in the VIP back in the day tunnel, and I had it sent off, and someone who I knew was a friend, but grabbed it and just shook it like crazy. <laughs> And I just turned around and the hang like, I mean, it shot straight up in the air and I was doused in it. And I was <laughs> lo- losing my shit because... It's the stickiest stuff, it. man. I, that's, that's the thing, the aftermath of it is like, I could have climbed up the wall. I've literally just spilled a lot on my desk and it's like sticking already. I, uh, had to, I, was, I had to take my keyboard apart earlier today because I spilled a Red Bull on it. Amazing. Uh, off the bat, I think this is... Can I give me that, that Tizer vibe again? 
Yeah, but the shite ties that we had. Yeah, yeah, oh, but the, and it's also oh, like, it's, it's got a weird bit of aftertaste, don't you think? Mm. So, look, as it, um, I've never been a big fan of it, and I'm, I'll be honest, I think it's maybe the first time I've had it since I was 15, hanging about the streets in Hunter Hill, and I had a bottle of that, look, as it, that you're talking about, Al. Um, just hanging about, I was a wee nerd. Um, Were your cons? Aye, yeah, probably the North Face on, just, just by a wee bam. You could never have North Face back in. I've Come never... On. I have never in my life knowingly taken illegal drugs ever. Knowingly taken as such a fucking not. No, though, that's, what, that's what I'm getting. That's what I'm getting to. Okay. Fifteen years old. Uh, I gave somebody else a drink of this, and they gave me it back. And somebody put jellies in it, and I, I was <laughs> out of my nut. Do you mean this guy? Out my nut. <laughs> that guy. That guy right there. <laughs> I was like freaking out, lying on the wall, like. That I thought I was going to die. I didn't know what was happening, and just because I was just this wee guy that didn't know anything, I was, I didn't. I just, I, thought I was. I'm like, I'm dying. I'm going to die. Was this was actually she, how you looked at that time? Yeah. And so you uh, have you having some you singing boy? Were you singing boys on songs when you're? <laughs> and that was Wesley. <laughs> for it, for him, they listening on a podcast. Nick is just currently showing that photo. Oh, sorry, I, I forgot about a podcast for a moment. <laughs> I was showing a picture of Andy. If you imagine that David Beckham Cottons look, yeah, pretty much. Uh, that's that's what he was going for. Actually, weirdly, Al had that same haircut. Of course, man. Probably was... at that same time. If you look I at that, money. if you look at that picture, there's about fifteen of the boys on the team have all got the same haircut. Jimmy Allen's in that picture, by the way. In fact, uh-huh. guys, Slip, get slipping on, guys up the back. <laughs> get on the YouTube. If if Jimmy Allen is like a he's like a hockey hero in. Uh, and Pais- the Paisley scene, but I'm going to not as much. And I'll wait until you've showed the picture of Jimmy Allen, but not as much as a hero as the other guy that you asked me what his name was. Oh, yeah, look at that man. There's, there's Jimmy Allen there with uh, Jimmy Allen, that, absolutely. Hero. Look at that smile, he's palms big on wish, there, big wishes just in front of him as well. That's right. Uh, but the other guy in front of him. So this is this is. I mean, that was under full teens hockey team. They're, we're talking kids here, small kids. Um, that and that guy, guy in the background in the black and white stripes. His name's Hash. <laughs> He's called <Just> Hash. Is it just Hash? Been a wee guy going to the rink for the first time, like that. like uh, Bernie the coach. Be like, ah, right, Hash, you take the kids down there. And I was like, <laughs> Hash, Hash. I probably didn't even know what Hash was. No, we well, might have done an old jelly so many. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, to go back to what you said here, real quick, uh, this is in that Tizer thing of like, it's like, see, you, you know, those films recently that have uh, all sort of like rested on their laurels with nostalgia. Mm. This is what Lucas is doing right now. It, it's T shirt back in going. I don't think even anybody's going back thinking, oh, I remember him, Lucas it was no, class. Think, you only look as when you're only well. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I, I almost feels like, I just always think the original Lucas Aid has had this thing of like, like you, somebody would give you, your mum would give you, and you go, I don't like this. And they'd be like, you're not supposed to like it. Ah, it's medicine. I mean, it's, I was never it says, given it as medicine, but it's, uh, it's, it says on the, I mean, I would never drink it. I would never go to Shambat. Glucose, and in, in, it's for that moment when you need it most, when the energy and the good times flow. Whatever you do, <laughs> do it with the energy, enjoy it cold. I mean, that's, a, that that's, home? that's bad. Khaled? That is bad. I was going to say, I think, uh, the, the, to be honest, my go-to of these was the orange, fizzy orange one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, This is garbage. I'm going to, real quick, this doesn't deserve your time. If you're like a soda drinker, um, I don't even know why you would buy this. It's kind of gross. It's made me sad. No energy here. I'm going to say 1.1. 1. 1. I'm I'm giving it a one flat. One flat? One yeah, flat. just... It just tastes like, just tastes like you remember. And if Sadness. you're putting, it, if you try throwing the regular <laughs> some, some of these these sodas out here, like I, it's a, it, if that's what you're, if you if you're hungover and you need something, do it. But if you try to enjoy something, just pass and get something else. If you're hungover, like, you may as well just go back to the booze. I give it. I, that's a good show. Yeah, look, because it's sport. Look, it's sports. Got to hate better than that. I give it a one point. I get a one point three. Let's it's see what the, let's see what the, the mathematician gives us. I don't know, you need to give me a bit of time here. Sometimes the, the skulls I'm going to need like a and... robot voice that like processes us and then goes, the score is 1.2. I'm on a different, I'm on a different computer and all that and I've got nothing, I don't even know where the, the wee skulls I are. I just, I, just, I just yawned for the first time in the podcast straight after a look at it. <laughs> <laughs> when you need that energy most. Right. It's laying it down, man. 
It must have like inhaled it wrong or something. It needs you need jellies in that man. Every- <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Uh, for some reason, I'm struggling to get our. Um, we've we've usually got to do the old way with the calculator. Number no, one. I mean I know what it is. I know what the number is. I'm just trying to put the number up on the screen. The the score is a one point one. Fair 1. enough. Point one. It, it doesn't even right. deserve to have the graphic up. Aye, <laughs> that's 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 true. That's true. I've honestly sipped. I mean, it's like if there's 330 mil, this is about 300 mil left. Mil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, no, that's, that's not that's not good. Not good. Good good, good drink cleaner. Though. I yeah, don't even know sure. if it would do that. I don't know. I know you need something sort of dark. I don't even know what is it like orange when you pour out? Yeah. Is he talking about is he talking about hangovers? What was like the last bad one? Bad hangover you had. So <laughs> if anything, maybe they asked me about hangover, I go back to this time when I was in Florida, 2007. And I was in Florida with my family. That was the um, last time. No, not the yeah. last. No, but this this is the hangover. The oh, okay. ha- this is a film. Um <laughs> So I'm in Orlando, I'm what, 26. I was working at Paisley Student Union at the time as a manager. Um, and what? I'd what actually just... I did a hell of a job. <laughs> I'd just applied for the, the job as the venue manager at the QM. Um, so going hall, they were, were there, we're enjoying ourselves and stuff like that. Um, and I, I knew a couple of friends out there that were working at Disney. Um, and they said, oh, come on, we'll take you out for a night out. We'll, take you, we'll go out on a Monday night. It's, it's like dollar drinks. We'll go downtown Orlando. I was like, class, let's do it. So we go out, dollar drinks, hand poured in Orlando, and you're like, I, I remember, I just I tanned so many drinks. And there was this uh, blue Smirnoff up behind the bar. I was like, oh, give, us, give us a shot of that. And I just took one of these, like, see the chunky Ikea glasses that you've probably all got in your kitchen? He just fucking poured the whole glass full of it. He's like, a dollar, mate. I'm like, poof. And I, I was the drunkest I have ever been. Uh, we're, we're leaving, and I'm like, Carla, I'm, I don't feel well. <laughs> I'm going to spew. Uh, I had a shirt on, like a check shirt and a white t-shirt underneath it. Um, she's like, "It's fine. I'll get, I'll get you uh, one of the Disney staff taxis home." So I get this, get in this car. Um, in fact, it wasn't. It was a friend of hers. It was a friend the of hers at Disney first. Disney staff taxi. So, so I get in, the, I get in this car, and I spew into my hands. Oh. But it's like, it's like Weetabix. Like, see when you oh. mix it a wee bit, and it's kind of like, it's it's mouldable. Do you know what I mean? You can, it's not quite wet. It's, you can definitely mould it and stuff. But it's slowly coming out my fingers as more and more of this comes out my mouth. And the guy's like, fucking get my car, get my car. Obviously, not in a Scottish so accent. It was the next part. <laughs> um, so I had to get out and I'd realised I'd spewed all of these seats. I took my shirt off, took my t-shirt off and put my shirt back on. I used my white t-shirt to like scoop this spew off his back seat. Oh, and Carl's like, I'll get you one of these Disney staff taxis. So this Disney car rolls up and you go inside it and it's got all these ex- staff members badges all over the inside it with all these names and you know the Disney, what a Disney badge looks like it's got their name yeah, yeah, and then yeah. where they're from so I'm like lying in the back of this taxi like freaking out with all these names just telling me like maybe a thousand names all around me and he's like where are you going and I'm like Paisley <laughs> <laughs> no idea where I am um, go home go to bed family got up the next morning they're like we're going to Universal and I'm like I'm not going anywhere I'm staying in my bed and um, they all go out uh, and it must be about nine in the morning there and my phone rings and it's the QM phone me to say, Andy, just want to let you know, we'd love to offer you the job. Um, we also think that Paisley are going to want to keep you, that they're probably going to offer you more money to stay. So we'd like to offer you another 1500 quid a year, which was decent for them back there. I mean, it wasn't even a huge amount of money. And I'm like, cheers. And I just hung up the phone. <laughs> I was just so out, man. I was so steaming. That was like, <laughs> cheers. Just just get me off the phone. I'm dying here. Absolutely dying. But that, that was the hangover. That That's the one I remember. It's the only one I remember. <clears throat> I, got, I mean, I've got a few. I mean, do you know what? I'll just run mine through as in, I'll just give you the occasion. I won't go into too many details, but they were all dank. First time me and Helena went to Vegas, we went to Rain and I see Stone and Graham. And I just, it, it's so sad because I'd like to remember more that night, but I was just gone, man. Like I was gone. And again, yacked in the taxi. So ashamed. <laughs> like, you tipped that taxi driver $100. <laughs> I was like, no wonder, man. Get, <laughs> shovel that out of the bag, that man. That probably was not enough. Mine was not, mine was not uh, moldable. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, other vivid, the other vivid one is uh, after Chris Lasani's wedding. Um, I was gone. And me and Helena, we, I was, we tried, when we started to drive back from Mar Hall, I was like, I need to stop at Brayhead and get a coffee. 
And Helena sat in there for about an hour while I went, you know, upstairs. The one in Bray Heads, like the toilets are upstairs. Yeah. She's just sitting there. She didn't even have a drink. There's this Mac coffee sitting opposite her. And then I'm just gone for an hour. I just came back down. I was like, white. Like, <laughs> let's go. She's like, join the coffee. I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, do you know what, though, man? It's like, it's, I hate the feeling of being hungover, man. Yeah. Man. Actually, I don't so, know if I've ever seen you have a pure... Which, weirdly, I'll let Nick tell his story and then I'll go on to what I was going to say. I remember mean, mine was like, I've had a few bad ones, but like the, the, all I was really thinking was uh, at the, 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 there was, I had a bad one at Christmas Day last year, but the... Uh, but you did that to yourself, man. <laughs> no, I know, but what I'm saying is that uh, <laughs> like just because like Lucasade's maybe this curer, mm. but what actually ended up being the curer was like red wine and turkey gravy. <laughs> and I was going to just, I was, I was just a quick way of saying, like, glass if, mixed if together. you need, if you need like the, if you need that automatic heal, like the, something about going back to the alcohol and a wee bit of savoury soup or something. I like, mean, yeah, pickled onion curia. monster munches, pickled onion monster munches is a cure. But uh, what, what I was going to say is, I don't think we've <coughs> ever been on a night out together. Oh, I mean, we're, we're <laughs> oh aye. And your wedding. Uh, but I didn't drink at my wedding. I was, Although I was actually wedding. discussing this with someone yesterday. I did, I did. Uh, I did. <laughs> you, you made up for it. Cheers, I mate. Was, like, I, was uh, <laughs> I was thinking about your wedding recently, and I was like, I wonder, like, how much time you actually got to spend with Jenny at the wedding? Because if I remember right, it was you and Taylor just cutting about. Yeah, the, but I mean, people always system. say that. People always say that you re- really get to speak to your significant other at the wedding. I don't know if you felt the same, man. I, uh, a wee bit um, mine was in a slightly smaller venue Andy so it was <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have a huge people it was more just the idea that you and Taylor it's like you got there and it was like you know what me and Taylor are just going to have this one yeah. ourselves man see you later guys that's good Taylor is my son by the way for anyone listening thinking is he getting a bit I know just a pure random <laughs> guy <laughs> <laughs> an old friend <laughs> no I mean maybe we, after after this we can get back and get another one going man oh, I wedding. we need one Bunch of, bunch of funky stuff man yeah definitely especially if we, t- we take a trip oh, oh, over to Remelton Remelton oh, we'll find out later on if you'll have us <laughs> shall we shall we crack on then yeah we'll get, well, we'll we'll get the next up. one out let's do it I'll, 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 I'll us. all right great uh, grab your let me get it let me guess the right it's called barbican malt beverage pomegranate flavour <laughs> why, oh, why did you bring us I mean, because this, I think it's a twist cap, by the way. That's a beer, mate. That's, a, that's what I was going to say. Have we had anything that's like malt, malt or malted? No, do you know what? I, I nearly bought. Yeah. Um, no, no we, the IKEA. Super, I nearly bought Super Malt. Oh, yeah. What? I mean, what, what's the deal? I with don't super even know what it is. I just always remember the guys in the band always, weren't they? They would always get Super Malt, but I've, I've no idea. A malted, a malted beverage to me is a beer. It well, looks like a beer. Is there, it, it, looks, it, it looks like a Stella. Well, I'll run it down quickly because I obviously did a quick deep dive. Uh, definitely non-alcoholic malt drink distributed by the Anuan Coca-Cola Company, primarily so Middle East, North Africa. Uh, and so it's produced in Dubai in the bank. Yeah. It was introduced in 1983, the year of my birth. There you go, man. So, I mean, it's like, yeah, Middle East, North Africa, um, Due so does it, does this come in other flavors? I believe it does. I can see. A, I can from what I can see online, st- the strawberry seems to be very popular. Let a me, uh, yeah, this is big. It's big out there, man. Let me dive in real quick, right? As as someone who has been uh, to Dubai, not a big drinking culture for the residents of that place. And uh, you have a few scoops, though. Of course, and uh, actually, funny story. I, when I was there uh, working, the <laughs> They had, there was a, a, a holy holiday and like the hotel wasn't allowed to sell booze and like uh, one of the models from the mob uh, that they were filming <laughs> it was chatting people's door and buying like <laughs> buying their like mini bar off <laughs> and then charging it back to the to the client <laughs> that's so bad he, he, t- he turned up down at dinner pissed and they were like this is impossible <laughs> like, how are you pissed when the hotel is literally not serving booze? And he's like, mini bars in it. That's what he said, mini bars in it. But then, so, the I mean, that, I've popped this already. And the reason I was saying that is because off the bat, it's uh, it kind of smells beery, 
which you would expect from a carbonated malt drink. But also, just go in real quick. It smells like weed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It smells like hash. There's definitely like- there's definitely some fruit in there, though. Um, <laughs> you see what I mean? He nearly fell off his chair. It's it, smells like, it, smells like, it smells like... It smells like an old an old man that cuss about that referee costume. <laughs> um, What's going on here? I mean, this must this must be because of that not big drinking culture they want to make. I was it thinking, look, like maybe like, like you wanted to, to be like a beer. It's even got the foil kind of vibe. I mean, this does look. If you were holding this in the club, I know it looked like a beer. Not just asking. I smell a wee bit like like not even. I smell a bit like weed. I'm going in. I'm going in. Okay, I think that's going to be barking. It's. Oh, it's gross. <laughs> oh, it, it's, it it's not off, actually. It's not, it's not, it's not gross. It's not as. Let, it's me, just, it's no, it's let me take you on a journey here. Tell me if you're with me every step of the way. You ready? You sip it. You're reminded of that sweet pomegranate flavour. And then automatically you're dragged backwards through a hedge and then through a field of ashtrays. Only at the end to be greeted by someone blowing hash or smoke in your face. It does have a weird aftertaste. That really. is honking, man. <laughs> I don't think it's that. But I don't think it's that bad. But it's, no, not, it's not. It's it just a soda. Gross. It's not. It's not extremely pleasant. No fuck. It's, fuck it's weird. That. See when you, every so often you smell it and it smells like feet though. Oh, dude, that's like someone's like you know that thing with people like try to jazz up a Robinsons. And they like put yeah. a bit of lemonade in it. It's like someone's done that except like they've left fagged out and a <laughs> bit of cannabis at the bottom. It's kind of like when you, it's kind of like when it's a wee bit like when you get the pure craft beers and something like it's a pomegranate beer. And you uh, taste it. You kind of wish that was as pomegranate <laughs> as this. <laughs> Let me tell you something now. Very really that put. Very really that put. <laughs> <thing back on. laughs> It's not even that funny, but very really will I put this back on. Just not the stink <laughs> of the house. I'll stop it. <laughs> I'm pull it down. <laughs> totally, right. Wait, we're, we're in. We're back in. We're back in. We're back in. <laughs> right. It's, do you know what? I, can't, I just can't get a baseline on it. I don't think. Try second is. I wouldn't say it's or as we call them in Scotland, <laughs> fags. I <laughs> used to be freaking out about the fags. Uh, there's a fag dose. Stop saying that. If there was a I fag dose, this is what it would be. <laughs> Listen, I can not be bought. No, and I'm the one that edits this, so that's going in. Just bleep it out. I'm um, not bleeping it. It's staying in. It looks you like you've thrown the private chat as we're doing this because you have tried to be sneaky about it. <laughs> Every time I look down, it looks like it says fag donuts. <laughs> and even if this was a cigarette Stop flavored donut, I can you do it, man? This is the most uh, barking drink I've ever tasted. I, I, don't, I don't think it's that bad. See, the more it's I'm drinking, gross. the more I can stomach it. I'm going in. Genuinely. 0.2. It's fucking rubber. Oh, come on. That's nonsense. I genuinely don't even think it's, it's that bad. Like, it's gross. I would I even just, I would even give this to my worst enemies. This is the first malt drink we've had, right? I like malt. I like beer. I actually like malt diesels. <laughs> I would eat a pomegranate malt diesel. I would need this. This is shocking. This is like this is like someone dropped pomegranate in an ashtray and kicked it about and gave you it back. There, there is a weird aftertaste to it. I'll give you that. There is a weird, weird, weird aftertaste. That maltiness is a b- bit bizarre. But it's not that bad. I'm giving it a 2.1. Uh, you're mental. Nah, I'd probably go somewhere between two and three because, like, two and three? This is definitely not for everybody. Definitely Dude, not. This is like, this, do you know what this is? <laughs> maybe, I'm, maybe I'm wrong, right? But, like, what was... Uh, was Materva not in this region? That's what, yeah. I thought Materva was like Materva scored was, massively high. No, but not Materva's, for me, didn't he? It was haunting. Materva's the closest. I'd say Materva is the closest thing we've had to this. That's what I'm saying. I hate this. We gave Materva a two point six. I'm going. I'll give it one um, more. I, I, I've got a strange. This story is zero I'll, zero. I'll give Materva a four point one, and I gave. I'll be honest. 6. I wanted Terrible. to give this a zero. 
<laughs> but I just, I just, I felt too bad. Somebody oh, been waiting there for making it. I want to give this a two point five. You're mental. Because two point five, which which gives a uh, barbecue pomegranate malt, malt drink. A one point six. Just call me Malt Disney. <laughs> <laughs> malt Disney taxi. Malt <laughs> Disney <laughs> drink. How in the bag? That wasn't that bad. That was. I that genuinely was, wasn't that bad. Oh my yeah. god, it's terrible. Please, guys, do not. I'm honestly tempted to go to the fridge and just bring another one through just because the first two have been so crap. Uh, but I mean we, we've we've got we've got two left. And one of them is with a uh, friend of the podcast, Seamus McDaid, mm. um who's coming up later with the football special. Uh, I mean we kinda alluded to it as it is the most anticipated interview of the week. Obviously there was another big interview this week which is kinda taking the headlines. Did you did you watch any of I did see it. I did who got it. interviewed? Harry and Megan, the big Oprah. Let me ask real quick, did you both watch it? I sat down to watch it with the wife and fell asleep sat five minutes down. in. Literally. I fell, yeah, fell yeah. asleep five minutes in. I saw it. You I sat down as well. I saw the whole thing. Well, I just oh, well, well let me just off the bat, why did you make time in your day to hear this? I didn't make time. I just well, was gonna We're in lockdown, there's nothing else going on. I, mean, I was just like but of all the all the all the all the entertainment to consume, well, what what made this? It was, oh, it was going to be a big talking point. It was yeah, always going to be a huge talking point. I mean, I there is know. no water cooler in your house, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I don't know. I just I think it's interesting because I feel like I don't. I wouldn't say it's interesting that, but I feel like I had a kind of idea in my head of like, hey, what's happening with these two, and then I was like, well, let me just see. Plus, that is a bit of a spectacle in itself that is. Oprah Winfrey doing it. She's like, let me get a piece of this, man. Yeah. I, hope, I mean, I, like, I never watched it. Um, I've seen memes, so I kind of know roughly <laughs> some of the stuff. That's, it. That's where I got all my news from. <sighs> let me dive in. I'm, I'm not a... I didn't watch it. <laughs> I'm not a, roy- <laughs> I'm not a royalist. I'm not a royalist. I'm not a loyalist. I'm not a unionist, really. But uh, in terms of, like, the royal family, and in terms of, like, this whole media circus that goes along with it. I mean, it makes for good Netflix shows. Don't get me wrong. I like The Crown. But this kind of stuff is so like, it is so overblown by the media and the tabloids. It is utter garbage. We're in the middle of a pandemic where like serious things need to be broadcast. And we've got like, these two complaining about living the spoiled life that they had. And and not to say that I'm like on that Piers Morgan thing, but I just mean like, it's like, well, it what does are we here? Like- what are we doing here? It's, like, it's weird. Like, I, I, I watched it and I probably get opinions on both ways, both sides and could, could argue it for a while. But then I thought to myself, I don't really care that much. It has zero effect on me. I'm not really I was that kinda, bold. I was kind of thinking, it was like when all these things are going, they're saying that, uh, and I don't like it too political because I saw the podcast, but I, just to say that there was like all these things saying that the royals are possibly racist. And it's like, hold on. Let's go like, th- I mean, it was only last year that we found that one of them was like involved in the Epstein stuff. And uh, if you go a little bit further back, they've made plenty of movies about the other one who was like pals with Hitler. It's like, what the, what, at what point did you think they were like, cool? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, at what point I, did anyone I, think the royal family was like... Uh, it's one of those things where I really couldn't care less. I, I genuinely, it doesn't it? has no effect on me, so I'm not even going to... I've, it's one of those ones where I've said to myself, don't get in an argument online, don't get in an argument online, because it's just idiots that get in arguments online about it. But it's not an argument. You can either, you, no, can, just kinda, you can just see, like, like that's what I'm saying. I'm just looking at the whole puzzle out in front of me, and I'm just like, this is, th- there is no facts here that I've learned that couldn't have been guessed, if you know what I mean. And the fact that Oprah Winfrey, which was funny because I kind of referred to it as being like, <laughs> Like uh, a more intelligent Jeremy Kyle, which I mean, forgive me, isn't Oprah Winfrey's like background out with of like giving books to people? Was she not like a just like a pure family drama talk show person back in the day? Yeah, kind of. I mean, ah, she was her, an Ellen, Ellen generous, really. That's her, her lane. She's like, she was like, she was in the early on it, so she was ahead of people that had to resort to more like shock. I know she's more than that now and and she is a big cultural figure in America but it's more just the idea that uh, what was that like 
Why was she the media? What was it? She's probably the, I mean, if, if, if you're Megan, who else are you going to choose? Like literally who else are you going to choose to do yeah. that? Unless you pick Michelle Obama to interview. It's so that's, wild that they the now have go. like, they now have like, and I'm, I'm I just want to say a like, caveat that by saying, I don't, I'm not a big, don't care about the Royals. So again, that's both. I still consider those two Royals. Um, the idea of like, like now they've got a podcast and they're doing their interviews and just breaking out any of this sort of media thing. And it's just like, well, why, why should we, the, the poppers really like, how can we even, have, well, there's nothing in this that we can affect or do, or it's not like the Royals are going to go anywhere anytime soon. That's just a tradition. It's just going to continue. I think, I think what's important to understand is like some people are invested in it in, in whatever side of the argument they fall on. But see if you just take it as like, if, these are two people that are just let's 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 just say they're just relaying their experiences. Do you know what I mean? They're just telling what happened to them. And if if and I think where where the fallout with Piers Morgan came is like if what was going on was affecting Megan and Harry's mental health to some extent, the environment we're in, and they feel like they want to come forward and voice it, they're they're entitled to. Like you say, you didn't watch it. No one's there isn't anything really hanging on it. It's not like the budget or anything that immediately affects you. So these are two people. They're not saying like the world should tune into this and care. They're just saying like, well, we've, we're we're going to talk about this because I think one thing you can't one the only one thing I took away from it is you can't deny the way that um, the way that she was slated in the press and some of the angles they took on it. And people and and some she. Well, you can still see that now, like how they they, they sort of slate her, yeah. and I, I don't I don't understand what the press is like. But the thing is, like the, the people's just printing in anyway. Like they could, like one day they could be saying, "Oh, totally." And she, pro, she alluded to the fact that someone, someone had said inside of the palace that you know we've all been through this. First of all, they haven't all been through it through the same lens, but see, at the same time, it's like. If somebody just going, well, this is just part of being a royal. It's like maybe she's trying to raise the fact that like it shouldn't be for any of them. Yeah, it doesn't need to be. Yeah. Yeah, but anyway, I love soda, and <laughs> <laughs> I think that the, the only other thing that, that that really got me about it was, uh, and again, I'm not backing up Piers Morgan on it because his views were deplorable. But forty one thousand people complained to Ofcom. Who the fuck is complaining to Ofcom? Turn the channel over. Mm. You don't need to listen to it. Plus, yeah. there's no chance everybody that complained even watched the fucking thing. But that's that's, ha- that's, lies, that's yeah. happened before. Like yeah. people just love complaining. But I mean, I think I, I I get where they're coming from. They wanted away from the UK press, who are the scum, the worst, the 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 paparazzi that we have in this country are worse than anyone else. Um, don't get me wrong, they're maybe sleeping in Lady Gaga's trees outside their garden to try and get a photo of her. But they're not twisting stories and hacking dead people's phones and all of that kind of nonsense over there. So I can see, understand it. They've got to try and make a living out out there for themselves, which is why the podcasts coming, the Netflix shows coming, and all that. Don't you, don't you think sometimes though, like that? I mean, that's only mm-hmm. like we're only holding a mirror up to ourselves. Do you know what I mean? Like, it was like, it, it was badly timed. The only reason, no, but I mean, the only reason we have paparazzi is because we crave it. We're yeah, totally. Humans. I mean, if we if we didn't if we stopped buying the fucking shit that they printed, then. We, we wouldn't be in this situation. I, I'm not saying it. that these people don't have a right to complain about the situation. <laughs> it's just, it's just kind of like, I, th- I find it kind of like, I find the way that the Royal family kind of works in the UK in bad taste, considering there's food banks and people in poverty. Yeah. But I also find that complaining about once they've had their fill and like had their wedding and had all like these amazing like sort of setups and not have to give back homes or money that they've had yeah. up until a point and then to complain it's just like well like, yeah it's, it's, it's my diamond like, shoes are too tight it's like let's just burn the whole thing down then if that's how you guys feel but like yeah. I don't actually like this is the thing and it's not that, that I really care about the rules but it's like I look to other countries and think it's impressive that when their royal families are not they're more active within their communities and they don't have such a financial strain on, well, it doesn't even matter about the strain because I don't know what the government budgets are, but it's more just that they don't, it's just in bad taste when there's like citizens of our like island, essentially our collection of islands that are like struggling and you've got like, like you're saying someone complaining about like the diamond shoes, but 
it obviously yeah, it is only the second. Game. It's the, the second most interesting interview of this week, seeing as Seamus McDade is coming up at the end of this. So, ah, and before yeah. Seamus McDade comes up, we do have one more piece drink. Of, we do have one more drink to taste before Seamus McDade comes up. So let's dip into Andy's bag and get it out. Quick question said, before, quick question before we get this out. How do you always remind, wait until I've got it out the ice? Remind me, uh, no, you can do this as we go. What what TV show was she in again? Meghan Markle. Suits. Uh, did you notice it? class of oh, Suits is one of the best TV shows of all time? No it's doubt about it. I never Suits, finished it. Is, is she like a Suits big? Is she a big deal in it? Yeah, she's yeah. a big main character. Main. How's her acting chops? Not Just, bad. Well, no, no classic, way. classic marketing move from Netflix. Nick Smallin switch open up Netflix the big recommended banner right across the top suits what a move <coughs> I'm just going to I'm looking at IMDB real quick just to see and never mind the IMDB him. Meghan Markle was on my list like my my my, my allowed list before oh. Prince Harry knew who she was you're allowed list aye I like the, the friends what's the like, allowed list aye, the list of birds that you're allowed to be with that your missus can't be annoyed about whoa use of your lists Mine's is on my phone. Mine's laminated. Get Hold on. Get laminated. Give me the give me a quick rundown in the list before we get a nice drink. I don't have okay. a list. I mean I can spitball. Spitball. <laughs> three. Three. Give us a top three. Because actually the reason I'm asking is because this kind of feeds into like something me and Amy spoke about just before. She's not letting you have a list. Was like, no, basically, I basically, it's over basically Amy showed me showed me a TikTok of uh, Shania Twain. She's like, How is this Shania Twain? And I said, Shania Twain's a fox. And she was ah, like Shania Twain's anyway. And she was like, oh, you get to say Shania Twain's a fox, but I don't get to talk about the multiple men that she talks about. Here's, here's one. Yeah, before we, before we bury ourselves, <laughs> well, why don't we just bury the females? Is there any, name one male that your missus has brought up. Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm fine with that. Leonardo DiCaprio would be one for my missus. Fair play. Oh, but Brad Pitt from the recent, the recent Brad Pitt, Amy Stein, I fancy to Like the older Brad Pitt. He's See, quite a, I'm like James McAvoy coming out there now as well because he was on that Bake Off. James McAvoy in a wee apron. People are enjoying that. Helena's covert. We'll just be watching a movie and she'll just go, she'll go, what? what's that? What's his name? And <laughs> never ask that. Save so, that in the phone. <laughs> what's your man? Chris Pratt when he was in Jurassic Park. Went, what is his name again? <laughs> You'll have, just, just look at Parson Rex season one when he's about yeah, four yeah. stone. <laughs> so so just, just to give the people at home a wee idea. So oh, there's oh my, my God, list. He and, literally has a list. I'll be, I'll list my phone. And you may have seen the wee no, check no, marks we, beside that. We didn't that. get to see. I know, I'm going to tell you who they are. There's wee okay. check marks beside some of those names. And that's Why because those are, the ones, those are the ones that are married. So oh, I'm like, okay. they're not really fair game. All right. And Jenny started getting a wee bit annoyed because there was times where I actually crossed paths with a few of these oh, people and she was like, whoa. Yeah. So top of the list. Is Zoe Deschanel. celebrities that Jenny thinks yeah, that you're going to get a shot? Are these, in, uh, are these in order? Top of the list, Zoe Deschanel. That's that's your... That's okay. my number one. Then maybe not in order once you go down, but she's top of the list. Okay. <laughs> five star five star sideballs, man. Aye, five, star, five star. Em- Emmanuel Shikri. I don't know who that is. Sloan. She's Sloan from Entourage. Oh, yeah. Okay. I remember. Minka that. Kelly. Who's this? She was in Who's Friday that? Night Lights. Pff, Minka Kelly. Man. Leah Michelle. Who was Rachel from Berry Glee? from Glee. Yep, Rachel Berry from Glee. Okay. And you've got a thing for noses. Holly Will. I do have a thing for big nose. Holly Willoughby. Hi. Okay. Uh, Kate Nash. Kate Nash. <laughs> Anna, Ken- Anna Kendrick. I can see where Megan, you're going with that. Megan Markle. She's on your Sarah, list. Oh, you said that. Yeah, she was on my list before she was even I knew who she was. Sarah Rafferty, who is Donna in Friends, the big ginger one. Uh, Eliza Dushku. Mm-hmm. Rachel mm-hmm. Riley. Mm-hmm. Georgie Thompson. Nina Conte. I don't know. Ni- who is that? Nina Nina Conte. Yeah, Georgie Thompson. Like you would know jobs or something. No, Nina Conte is the she's a ventriloquist. What? Uh, Brittany <laughs> Snow. Right, listen, wait, I'm, I've got one more Brittany Snow who was in Pitch Perfect and then right. uh, the, the lot of people that think this is a wild card Joe Frost who's Joe Frost? Super Nanny <laughs> who's Super Nanny? <laughs> what do you mean who the fuck is Super Nanny? is that a film? no oh, Super Nanny the TV worst. show she puts worst. the wains in a naughty step she could put me in a naughty step any day dude what are you talking about? that's, just, <laughs> dude, that's, that's the most insane list it's class isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no wonder Jenny's freaking out super nannies on it there you it's go. got that teacher librarian vibes 
you are looking them up. You've got to get me to send you that list later on. You can oh, do it. I mean, right now I've got... Oh, actually, I, you can see I was looking up because he's got the, the, the white face of... <laughs> I've got... Uh, I, that Google reflection on his face. <laughs> wait a minute. Oh, wait. Uh, Joe Frost is divorced. Uh, she's, oh, has she? I'll, wait a minute. I'll just uncheck that then. She was uncheck checked. She'd be checked. I'll just uncheck that. She's fair game again. Fair game. You never didn't still explain that. <laughs> Joe Frost is single. Right, um, anyway, is any is any he's, he's going to add yours or are we going to get into this drink? It says Jet from Gladiators. It's a fine choice. I, I was a, a Lightning fan though. Nah, Gina, man, nah. Gina G. Gina G. They don't have to be throwback. Is that no, I was actually just because actually earlier on when I was thinking about things to talk about in the show, I was going to say what your first crushes were, but I, I will save that for another time. Didn't we talk about that before? No, 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 no. But that's, that's a you, good one. You, 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 you never, uh, you always like telling people about so we'll save that for another time. Anyway, uh, Andy's got a drink. Let's, 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 let's see it. So, I am bringing you all the way from Japan, um, and I'm, I'm going to wait until this comes in, this, this pink drink. Now you're like, what the fuck is that? I mean, Chibi Maruku-chan. Yeah, I have no idea what that is. But then on the back, your best, uh, your best uh, it's like interpretation of that. Uh, well, I name. mean, it, it's it says it here, Sakura Cola, Sakura Cola. What so Sakura? illustrations by Momoko Sakura, which uh, maybe is her cola. It also says uh, she be Maruko Chan. Yeah, I mean, I've no idea what this is going to be called. Sakura, I think when- Sakura means like cherry blossom. So, I mean, is this cherry coke? No, it's, I believe it, it'll be the colour. I guess they're referring to the colour. The is, 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 is this flower. a cola? Or is, is, is cola, a, is that a, a bad translation for just soda? Because mm. that, I mean, is, is this going to be a tab clear? Or is this... So could, do, you want, do you want me to read it down or do you want to just taste it first? I've just realised that on the embossing on the bottle, it says Kim, Kimura drink. K I M U R A, Kimura drink. That's a company thing. Seems like a decent amount of sugar in this. Let's go for it. Let's get. It. Yeah, let's taste it and then I'll I'll give you what I got here. Oh, and oh, oh. Did did you just get the wee spiral on the yeah. top? Oh yeah, shit. So the do you know I was going to say. Like, let me just like off the bat smell it. Was it ginger? No, like I'm going to take you right there. You ready? Fenomans. Hmm. Nah, it smells like gingerbread. It smells like Fenomans, doesn't it? Tastes like death. Tastes like Fenomans. I'm, I'm, I'm in this. This is, this is a. Uh, I give you another one. Oh, actually, after taste, cinnamony. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's maybe where I went with the gingerbread. Atomic, atomic, uh, atomic fireball after taste. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you're right. Uh, but but like, if that's the aftertaste, the the up front is definitely a it's de- is a hundred percent a famous cola when you first go in. I can I definitely get that man. So it's famous cola, cola, and then it's like it's like eating uh, atomic fireballs. Atomic fireballs, uh, drinking a famous cola. Yeah, that's exactly where I'm at. Where at? And that cola cola has a let's let's be straight up. That's not bad. That's not a bad thing. Stop. I mean, it's, it's a childhood sort of thing. Like, I could yeah. definitely see a, a situation where I got a can of Coke for the van and a packet of um, Atomic Fireballs. Although Atomic Fireballs were definitely a bit hotter back in the day. Keep game. This, this, the idea of a Sakura Cola is like this is basically like a cherry blossom vibey cola, right? So, is that cola? Right. It is a cola, right? In a sense, yeah, it is a cola. But it's got this kind of floral thing going on. The idea of doing this is definitely not unique to this brand. And I tell you that because there's another two brands that do a version of this that you may have heard of. They're called Coke and Pepsi. Oh. There's a Sakura Coca-Cola. So what is this? Is the brand here Kimura? Kimura drink Sakura Cola. Would that that be right here? I think so, yeah. Um, and obviously the cherry blossom is a, is a bit of a thing in Japan um, Mark oh, oh do you know oh, you go, go ahead no 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 have you got it there no no I just could just tell a thing but I know I the, the, the cherry blossom is, is like a sort of 
spiritual time. Because as, as, as soon as they like they appear, they can like as soon as it, it's kind of like as soon as they appear, they can they like they can actually be like fly away kind of thing. So it's like it's a fleeting moment of life celebrated. So maybe this well, is like a, a maybe this is like a particular thing. Mono no aware. No, so you think this is like a seasonal drink? Is that what you're saying? There? I'm thinking mm. that that maybe that would be maybe. Cool. That'd be cool if that was the vibe. Although, where did you get it from? Uh, some like online, um, like online Japanese supermarket type vibe. Oh, well, you're doing a deep dive. They're going to deep dive uh, Momoko Sakura and see uh, if this person is a celebrated artist or not. Oh, cool. uh, can I just check? Is, is this Japanese? Yes. Yeah. The fact this get cherry blossoms and Mount Fuji on it is definitely telling me a trip. Oh, I didn't see Mount Fuji. Okay. Now, now we don't normally we don't normally do this, but at the same day that I got that, I also picked this one up, which is I'm a very back. similar vibe, but Fuji it's Fuji San, San Cola. So, and that's from the same brand, that Kimura drink brand. So, I'll be interested to see. So this this actually says at the top, Fuji no Kuni original cola. So this is like the original flavor of that one. That's your cherry coke. This is original coke. Is that, is that's that not a- coke. That's that's that a cloudy like limit. I'm Fuji on the hang. I think so. Yeah. Is it Fuji the drink of the Fuji? It's gonna come in. There you go. Hi, right, Ans. There you go. So you said, so Momoko Sakura, right? It's not the artist. Of course not. That you put that character on the bottle. You're looking it's at. Mo- someone can pop up. That is, that is that Momoko Sakura. Sakura so she is uh, a main character in a Japanese anime and manga Chibi Maroko Chan and she's always called addressed by the nickname Maroko or by her surname Sakura and okay, she's so, uh, uh, that goes uh, to are, we, are we drinking like limited edition drinks here man it like we've bust the molten and the it was the least worth a fortune <laughs> feel like pure, some weird Pokemon limited Joint. It, I, I'm cool. them straight out of the bat. I'm into it. I actually quite like it. I, I, would, out, reckon, I, I would recommend other people go get it. I'm I giving it a three point. I'm giving it a three point one. Three point one. There you go. I don't. I, I like it. I don't know if it's for everyone. Um, and I need to think about the soda game as a as a whole as a playing field as as a game of risk. It's not in the threes. But it's not in the ones. I wonder where it could be then. It's not under 2.5. I mean, 2.8 seems about right for that. I mean, I, I was between a 2.9 and a 3.1. Like that's, that, that, was my, that was my ballpark there. It's, it's very nice, and but I, but I don't think it's for everyone. But if I think if you're that way inclined, you should dive in. Yeah. Nah, it's kind of funky. I gave it the first one tastes like death, but now I can get my get my palate on the profile. The Fentiman's vibes there. That's it's that's the kind of cola this one is, and then it's this funky cinnamon thing ringing off in the back. I'm just gonna give you one last piece of gold because I'd be keen to try the Coca Cola version. On the list that I've got here for the Coca Cola, it says every year during the Sakura season, Coca Cola Japan releases a new aluminium bottle with a new design. So maybe it's not seasonal, but maybe during the, that period, people do, like maybe they get the bold Momoko Sakura, a beloved character, and stick her uh-huh. in the bottle. I'll slide in with a score. It's not for everyone. So therefore, it doesn't go north of a three. So I'll go 2.8. Oh, there you go. You kind of like, we had, that's weird that we have the same score, yet I was talking off and you were talking there. Which gives the... Uh, Kimura drink Sakura Cola a 2.9 2.9 so for those curious yeah. souls like I'll go on this, it wasn't quite a 3 but it was nearly a 3 so let me get yeah. I mean don't don't go out your way to import that or anything like that but if you see it in a shop you're like here I'm going to grab one of them that's that's maybe the kind of vibe you're getting also maybe grab it just because it's a nice ball and it's maybe limited edition and we just drank us so grab me one too <laughs> <laughs> that's our last drink before we send it over and we're going to send it over right now to 
Mr. McDade himself, Seamus. Um, it's quite it's, it's a, quite a chunky wee bit of time we had him for, and he deep dives into a lot of things from the history to the future of McDade's. Without further ado, here's Seamus McDade. This is the most anticipated interview of this week, probably of this year, as we have got the one, the only, Seamus McDade from McDade's. Seamus, how are you doing? Good, how are we doing? Very okay. good, thank you for joining us, Seamus. Um, it, it's it's amazing to see such a hero that, that adorns our um, lovely leaderboard here. Um, well, it's, and it's nice, I thought I might have been stepping into enemy, enemy territory here, so it's nice that I've had a few. <laughs> oh, he, he, we're getting straight into the controversy. Yeah. <laughs> straight into the controversy. So the, the first time that I brought a McDade's drink um, to the table, it was the original, the plastic bottle football special, um, and it didn't go down well. It did not go down well with the guys. Um and you, you immediately got, you reached out to us on on direct message on Instagram and said, "Sorry, kid, maybe you should check out our premium line." And we had we had never heard of the premium line before, so we are so glad that you reached out to do that because clearly we've only tasted two so far, and they both sit up there at the very top, um, well, and rightly so, rightly so. After your first review, I took it like the way Jose Mourinho takes bad press. Like I went in to the canteen at work, just put it on the wall. I think I think I had a quote from Nick that said, I wouldn't want to celebrate anything with this. <laughs> that is what people are saying about you to my staff. We got them G'd up. Jeez. Listen, <laughs> I I speak, right. I, I, if, you, if you've watched the show before, I, I can't be bought. So even today, <laughs> I can, yeah. you're Nick's on the show, face. I can't be bought. Nick's but face the, is uh, on the McDade's canteen dartboard. Let me, let me caveat the whole thing by saying we were under pressure. Morgan, the we, were, we were reviewing it for television, actually, at the time, for Scottish uh, news television. Oh, and uh, we were under pressure, and out came this boastful big 500ml bottle, just boasting that it was the, the football special. And, and uh, not only that, I brought it out saying this is this is like seen as an iron brew of Ireland. iron brew of Ireland. That's what I had been told. That's what I had been told. They say, you do you know what? Do you know what? I am, I, I, I am brew. That I am brew in Scotland right now is rubbish. You didn't have a refined palate yet, but as you've got oh. that, oh, <laughs> yeah. the palates are oh. refined. Give me better grades. So. I mean, the guys would definitely say that about me. There's no doubt there. <laughs> the one thing I respect though is that you reached out, you had the conversation. Not only did we try the premium stuff, and so far, so good. Two for two. Uh, but now you're on the show, and we're go- and we can clear up a lot of things, and we can talk about some the serious business of of McDade soft drinks. Firstly, well, firstly, we must mention the hoodie. The, the the merchandise is the hoodie, an absolute beauty. That hoodie, I love it. Um, they're they're available. Footballspecial.com. Go ahead. Get, in. get the plug in. Get the plug in. <laughs> um, so yeah, you put us onto the the kind of premium range, your your glass bottle range, which is is bottled and brewed in America. So, um, tell us, take us a bit from like your history of wh- how you started, like way way back in was it the thirties or forties to now where we are with with a premium range bottled in America. So, yeah, so we my the McDade's drinks were set up in the nineteen thirties by my great grandfather, um, and he was a wholesaler. He sold products to around to different shops. When his son, my grandfather, got involved in the business, they started getting involved with the alcohol wholesale side. So instead of just wholesaling retail products, they started wholesaling alcohol. And at the time, Guinness used to brew the stuff in Dublin and St. James's Gate and then have satellite bottlers all around Ireland. Just the road infrastructure wouldn't have been able to distribute it from Dublin. So we were a bottler for Guinness. Um, That taught us about how to bottle drinks. So in the wintertime when we'd be quieter, um, we started messing around with soft drinks. Um, my great uncle Eamon was sent away to work for another soft drinks company um, to learn out sort of how they did it. He came back into the business. And at the same time, um, my grandfather and his brother set up the Swilly Rovers, which is a local football club here in Remelton. And they were very successful. They won um, national cups, uh, you know, which would be a big deal in, in them days. And so they wanted to create a product that looked like a beer, that foamed up like a beer, but that was not alcoholic that they could celebrate winning football matches with. And so they called it Football Cup, and then that we that developed to be called Football Special then. Um, so, you know, in the 70s and 80s, uh, you know, we, we were a large alcohol wholesale company, and our more traditional flavors really stood out then. So we had a lemonade and an orange and a blackcurrant, 
Um, and that was really before the big multinational brands had really come into Ireland and really dominated in the way they, that they started to do then in the late 80s and 90s. So it was really only in the 80s that football special really started coming to the fore because that was unique then. Um, and that's uh, and then, you know, from that, then, you know, we, our banana um, and our pineapple. And we really try and try and do non-traditional flavors, because ultimately, if we just do you know, a more traditional flavor will get crushed by the bigger brands. So, um, can, you know, can I just, I, I just ask you, you mentioned, I think it was your uncle Eamon who was, was sent off to go and learn how, so basically he was sent out to steal how to do this. Is that, is that <laughs> right? He was, he was sent out to steal ideals from someone else and then come back and bring he the was, goods. He was garnering knowledge. Yes. He was, yeah. <laughs> what, what, what he really brought, what he brought to the business, um, you know, and this is, uh, I am talking the 1950s now. Um, what he brought to the business was, there was loads of people mixing soft drinks for us and, and messing around with flavors. He brought uh, the discipline to write the recipes down. So that so football special is seven flavors mixed together. You would not guess the flavors. You might guess a couple of the flavors that are in it, but you would never guess all seven. Um, but they're all critically important. So the reason that it has stayed is that he wrote it down. You know, and so that's really, he gave us a, a professionalism then, along with Guinness, because Guinness weren't going to let any old so-and-so bottle so they made us kind of learn about quality control long, long before, you know, that was a thing. Um, and then with that air of kind of professionalism, you know, that, that's that's really how we got our start. So then when did you move over to the US with the bottle and, and why? What, what was the what was the reasoning behind that and when did you do that? Well, I guess I mean it's it's two part reason. So the, the the first one is, you know, for us, um, the, you know, we had to, in the 80s and 90s then, we were all glass bottle uh, and it became increasingly difficult to just sell in glass bottle. Retailers were telling us, we won't stock your product unless it's in plastic. So we had to, my father had to do, spend big investment and, and putting in a plastic line. Um, and we basically got rid of our glass line then because we felt no reason to have it anymore. Nobody would ever want it again. When I started seeing that there's probably a scope room for a glass range, there was nobody in the island of Ireland who would bottle a small glass bottle first. There's nobody in the, there are a few people in the UK, but they're all talking massive scale. They don't want to, they don't, you know, they're not going to be interested in the volume that I'm going to bring. Um, at the same time, I was living in New York. Um, and as I got involved, I had another career. And then I got involved in, back involved in the family business. In America, there is still a craft soda industry. Uh, and people will pay a premium price for like a, you know, like a Doritos, like you guys have reviewed. And, you know, the, the people will pay premium price for sodas there. So they have really small manufacturers. That's like walking into what our factory used to be like. Um, and so we were able to find the guys there in Reading Soda who were able to manufacture our products to our spec. So we fly over the ingredients from Ireland. Um, myself and my dad spent two days in their mixing room uh, showing them how to mix our products showing them how it was done, um, and then they were able to bottle it to our spec, and they were able to make a really, really nice, really premium soda that is like our stuff used to taste, basically. So that's why we call it the original range, uh, you know, in that. So so how did you find this, this other company? I mean, was that just with your other career? Is that what you were involved in? Did you just happen to say, oh, there's another company? That reminds me of back home. I'm going to work with these guys. What, what were you doing over there that... Well, so I was in America. I was actually a sports agent. Um, so I used to manage American footballers. Um, so, yeah, that was, you know. <laughs> Didn't see that coming. Didn't see that coming. Let's slow it down wait, there. Wait, let, pump, let pump me, the brakes. Let me man. interject here before, before we get into this deep. What I need to know off the bat is, have American football players celebrated with football special <laughs> they have certainly had football special in their hands as I try and take as many pictures as I possibly can before did they celebrate oh. though is that is a question <laughs> yeah no they have not celebrated <laughs> well no, never... well <laughs> keep my keep my face up on the canteen for now don't take that down yet <laughs> <laughs> so we'll get back to the sodas yeah football legion American football legion American football probably, yeah, yeah. So how, how, long were you, how long were you doing that for? Like Jerry I Maguire? That, I, I did it for four years. So I actually, I had seen Jerry Maguire when I was about 10 and I said, that's the job I want to be. And then I actually followed through and did that. I managed to blag the job when I was 18. Um, uh, I worked for, and I, there was at the time, 
so Gaelic football in Ireland is very similar to Aussie rules in Australia. But Gaelic football is all amateur. So the Aussie rules teams were like, here's cheap labor that we can get. <laughs> so they came and started to recruit Irish boys. And I inserted myself in the drama by becoming the agent of the Irish boys. And I purely, because all the boys they were signing were 18, 19. I was first year in university. So they were all in my sort of extended peer group. What so a hustle. Was, what a hustle. Amazing. I love this it. is a movie. This is a movie. Yeah, it was, it was definitely, I mean, I remember when it was my 21st birthday and the people in the office were like, oh, oh we thought you were 30. Like, no, <laughs> what age were you when you started this? So I moved to Australia with that, with them. And I had, a, 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 I guess, I, I worked for a bigger firm then um, and we had a small stable of Irish clients. And the guy I worked for in Australia gave me my start in the business, great guy, but he spectacularly uh, exploded his life. Uh, and it was front page and back page news of all the newspapers in Australia. And that was what sent me then uh, to America because I said, OK, I could see the I could see the color of our screen changing as he opens up Google to try and find <laughs> out who this is. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got an eye on everything. <laughs> yeah. so, so I went. So he sent me up with a job. Um, it actually, he actually sent me up with an interview with the NFL Players Association. So uh, uh, moved to New York. Uh, managed again, managed to blag a job with an NF- with an American football agent, an NFL agent, and started doing that job. And I loved it, but always had the inkling that I wanted to get back involved in the family business. So I was in my mid twenties then, and I just loved loved New York. Um, and I'd met a girl there, um, and you know wasn't really wanting to go home. So I said, well, why don't I import football special to America? Because there's so many Irish people there, I figured I'd have a market. So that ended up becoming we imported all Irish and British food and drink. Um, and we sold, I had, you know, we distributed from Boston to Philadelphia. Uh, and at that time, I said, I got to find a bottler. It makes no sense to ship this stuff when I can get it bottled here. So, I, it, I mean, it took me it took me three years to find a bottler. You know, it was a long slog. Um and I finally, I found one. So, you know, and, and now they bottle for us and we send it back the way, you know, so. You know, it's- <laughs> well, that's what I was just thinking is in your Jerry Maguire style movie, you stand up at the sports agents and you're like, I'm going to bottle soda in Ireland. Who's coming with me? Yeah. <laughs> and maybe um, one I, chick stands up and she's like, you know what? I could use a change of scenery. Yeah. <laughs> I've not well, I mean, I did, the, the, I did convince the girl to move back to her mouth. There you go. That was going to be my next question. That was my next question. He did not grab the goldfish though. So I don't know. <laughs> uh, in, in this movie analogy, we're short the goldfish. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so they brew everything out there for you. Did you spend time out there, like showing them how to do that? All of that. Um, yeah, or- yeah. Well, all they do is just make. So we send them the ingredients. The ingredients come to them, just plain marked A, B, C, D, um, and they. Oh, that's so we've, good. You know, we told them what to do, and they do it. Now, what they are very good at what they do, though. I mean, I find it really interesting that when you guys reviewed the orange, that you noticed the carbonation in the bottle, because they do a thing that's called pinhead carbonation. Um, which basically means that the, um, the, when the syrup is mixed and added to the water, it goes inside a vessel and it stays for 24 hours, 24 to 36 hours. And the CO2 is just constantly pumping through it. Um, and that should give you pinhead bubbles, which are what's yep. in champagne. Uh, and that should give you a more even consistency throughout your drinking process. So, so you know, can, I, can I just ask then, when you did see the review of the orange and uh, the McDade's cola. Um, Were you a bit taken aback because you were like, oh, fuck, they know what they're talking about? (laughs) (laughs) Um, Well, yeah, yeah. At the start, I said, I'm not even going to watch this. I'm not even going to watch this. What do these guys know? And then very suddenly I said, wow, these guys are really bright. What a great (laughs) podcast they were on. (laughs) The thing is, we don't claim to be aficionados, but... um, But now we know the term pinhead... We'll be throwing that around if we ever we'll, if we ever see it out for that one. I've got a few. I've got a question for you before we even entertain football special again. But the what were you drinking in America, uh, soda wise that you were into? Good oh, that's good. Oh, I, I drank a lot of Boylan's. Big fan. Nice. Boylan's and um, Boylan's ginger ale. Was, Recent, yeah, top notch. Um, yeah, we drank a lot of Boylan's, and then I would you know try a lot of Doctor Browns and stuff too. You know that was that so was a big one too. You, when you look at our uh, outwife of your own products on it, but when you look at our leaderboard there, um, are you impressed that, that, that these drinks are there or do you disagree with any up there? 
Oh, no, no, I'm so, no, like, I mean, uh, you know, all jokes aside, I am super proud of being there. And I mean, I was very disappointed when you reviewed it, but it is, you know, it's your opinion. And I appreciate that you guys are honest. Uh, I appreciate that you, you know, you're having me on. Um, I think that what I, what as a business perspective, you know, we, this is our premium range. These are our best drinks that we produce. But ultimately, the, the glass bottles that, you know, the football special we're going to try tonight sells for, um, you know, two pounds seventy. The five hundred mil plastic goes for a pound twenty five. My traditional market is your twelve year old out of school on his lunch break. He has a limited budget for what he's going to buy, and he still buys that plastic bottle football special. You know, by the lorry load. Um, is that so- weapon? <laughs> 500 mil is a weapon I've been saying that I would love to see that 12 year old full of that cane sugar though I mean that yeah, cane sugar yeah. really going in, going in for a fourth and fifth period like, <laughs> in, a, in a dream scenario though would you rather that 12 year old drank the glass bottle version no, not necessarily because there is a high sugar content and what I found interesting about when we re-brought out the original range was how sweet we thought it tasted Mm. Um, you know, people's palates change. You know, I think you guys are, you're connoisseurs of this. You know, you guys really know what you're looking for. But, um, it, you know, y- you think about our product, a lot of times it's moms buying it as well. Mm. So if the, if the mother's going into the shop, she's concerned. She looks at this and she goes, wow, 100% cane sugar and 12 grams of sugar per 100 mil. Nah, like, sorry, sorry, junior. You'll have to go without, like. So, yeah. no, but I bet it, she bangs a few balls in for herself <laughs> on a Saturday yeah. night once the kids are in bed. <laughs> yeah, so so that's the band. So if I can, do, and that's why we put it in a different branding. You know, we're we're. I am most proud of these products, but I'm equally proud of everything that we do. You know, so I I have a lot of like they they are still really good. I think you gave it a much like I think you gave it a far too low of a score. Like I'm amazed <laughs> how low you gave it. But Sp- I spoken like a true politician here. <laughs> I, I'd not like, like I say the the we the conditions weren't right, but the uh, yeah. but also like, like you say, we're, I don't I don't think of ourselves as connoisseurs. I guess we are. I guess that's what the point of this. We're passionate about this game, though. We yeah. uh, we're, we're looking for the best, and the that the, that at the time, I will say at the time because I feel like. It depends on the scenario as well when you're drinking these things, but there is like the it is always off putting to me to be handed a plastic 500 ml bottle, yeah, because it feels like a sharing bottle for a start. There's absolutely no need for me to be drinking 500 ml of anything. But I can, but, can you remember? I've, I've actually wa- I watched it back and I don't always watch it the podcast back, but I was like, let me let me get that moment up when the when the cola goes down. I, it's it's, one, it's the one. biggest reaction. Yeah, yeah, I just remember being like, "What the fuck?" I was like, well, I was, and in my head, I was like, "Am I about to say this is the best cola?" And there was nothing wrong with it. I was just like, because I was, I don't think I've ever been so sure about anything we've tasted that that at that point to say. And I was looking at Andy, and he was like, "Just say it, like kind of like yeah. you know I, you want to say it." And I had tasted it before I brought it on because I was like, "I'm not bringing this on if it's if it's not good." And I tasted it. I was like. And and to be fair, I was suffering from coronavirus at the time. So I had bad taste. And I was like, this might be amazing. I was like, we need to put it on. And then it was, it was when I saw your face, I was like, you were like, this it, is money. It was a real it's setting so for take. You were like, I wonder it, at what time will it be socially acceptable for my tagline to be, even during coronavirus, it tastes good. <laughs> like, I wonder. <laughs> there you go. Can I, I think James, can I, the cola is the cola like disappeared. We didn't offer the cola for about 15 years there, you know, yeah. because it was really, really, really hard to get the cola essence. Um, and then again, was you know, we just couldn't really get a market for it. Um, and the, this glass bottle has kind of revolu- has kind of revived it again. So the football special, uh, taste wise, out with the sugar content, is it a remarkably different flavor? To the no, our flavor is exact same. So the ingredients are the exact. The only difference would be the sugar content. But so, I mean, can, can I ask when your your is it your grandfather or great grandfather that started? Great grandfather, yeah. Other than the fact that they wanted it to foam, did they have an idea of their flavor profile when they were kicking it off? Did they know roughly where they wanted to land? Um, that is a good question. No, I don't think so. This was like an O and D product. They were messing around, really. So, no. right now, if if you were in, say, America, visiting some friends, 
and someone was to ask about what you do and you were to explain what football special tasted like before they tasted it, how would you describe it? Well, in America, I would always say it's like a cross between a root beer and a cream soda. You know, okay. so Which here... Which is not I, a bad place to cross. Yeah, you know, so here I would say it's, you know, it, it, um, I would say it's all, it's like a, yeah, like a creamy cola. I had a question in a similar vein. It goes back to something you said about you having unique flavors. Obviously, uh, having a drink called Football Special, the name and the branding gives you no suggestion as to what the flavor is. Much like I Am Brew, the, the, com- the question that Nick just asked is something that we deal with, and we don't work for I Am Brew, but we're still <laughs> expected to explain to Americans, what they say, what does it taste like? And a lot of them do come back and say, oh, it tastes like a really, really, really sweet cream soda, or it did in the last five yeah. to ten years ago, or whatever. But see, from a branding point, like, is that a good is that a good thing for you that you have a drink that isn't where the flavor isn't because that makes it super yeah. unique. You have yeah, to ta- yeah. you have to taste it to know. Yes, in many ways, no. And like I, you know, I, when I would speak to people in big marketing houses, for example, they would say, "Oh, change the name." For a start, it's too many syllables in that, and yeah, nobody knows what the flavor is. Um, but I, I guess like we've survived for eighty five odd years, so like you know, I'm, you know, it, it is what it is at this point, kind of. And its uniqueness, you know, I guess for us. The, the, what, what is really unique about our business, there was loads of independent craft bottlers throughout Ireland. There was probably loads throughout Scotland as well, I'm sure. Um, you know, rural locations are going to have lots of kind of independent people. What's unique about us is we've survived. You know, there is no other. It's us and like, you know, Club Orange are no longer uh, independent. There is no other independent. There's no other that's not Britfrick or Coca-Cola or LucasAid on the island of Ireland except for us. Uh, and when you even go to the that's UK, a flex. <laughs> that's a flex. Yeah, it, but I'd say we've survived through. Well, we've survived. The, the main reason we've survived is because we're from Donegal, which um, is like a very unique. We're you know we we only share a very small border with the rest of the Republic of Ireland, so we feel geographically cut off. Um, we we ex, our best export is our people. You know, half of Glasgow, half of Donegal folk have relatives in Glasgow. Uh, and they have a pride that's wrapped up in football special, so they have kept it alive. Yeah, you know, and that and that's you know that that's really what's sort of what's kept us there. So, but, but that's you know, like when you're talking about going to a marketing house. Marketing houses are always somehow trying to fabricate authenticity as the as a huge marketing tool, yeah. saying you know if we could paint this as being something authentic and something having a backstory. Whereas like, so the idea of changing the name or somehow you know, yeah. retelling the backstory, this, that makes absolutely yeah. no sense. If you're four yeah, generations deep, why would you change any of that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, people, yeah, people, as you said, people are always trying to come up with this four generations and how they came up with this product, you know, and like Megan said, I just got to live my authentic life and <laughs> I, will, I will be, you know, and I'll hopefully be able to sell this. Talking so, about so we, pride, hold on, one Andy, a sec, talking about pride, so see the fact that we've got McDade's Orange Cream and McDade's Cola sitting above club, how does that make you feel? Oh yeah. yeah. Well, again, it's club is run by some suit in an office in London. So you know, it's like... the one. The one thing, and I'm just going to caveat that the top five are all on four point one. They're actually on equal standing. They oh, are okay, just. Okay. They are just. They're technically just above them. I don't. I don't want to cause an argument here, but that's that's the way it is. Also, oh, club is but actually on par. Club clubs on four point one as well. Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah. As Rock Shandy though, Club Orange is actually down. Club. So so what we say is uh, four and above is the Hall of Fame. So okay. everything that you can see there is... Yeah, but my man here is doing it independent. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't have that big money. So yeah. He doesn't have a suit. He wears a something that, something that came up to us uh, recently is we found uh, we found some images of the, the football special and the banana ice cream, the McDade's ice cream. That's something we, we haven't seen over here. Is that is that a new product? Is that something you're... Yeah, pretty neat. It's, it's about three years old. Um, it came out around the same time I started doing the, uh, the original range. Um, my dad was always messing around with ice creams when we were growing up um, and, and different flavored ice creams and things. Uh, and our products and our, like our flavor profile lends itself to an ice cream. So, uh, you know, like it, it, it was a lot of cream soda sort of flavors running through a lot of our products. So that kind of works then for an ice cream. Um, so we, you know, we started manufacturing the ice cream. What it does is like, we're, like I said, we, you know, look at our social media and, our, and the activity that we get on there. A lot of it is with kind of people who have sort of aged out of our traditional market. 
Um, you know, and that's just natural. People in their late twenties are not going to drink as much soda as teenagers. Um, so present uh, company excluded. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but the ice cream, they'll buy the ice cream because they have great memories of football special and they'll buy the ice cream. And the other thing that we found about the ice cream market is that when you go in to buy a soft drink, if you're just coming in from your lunch hour, uh, if your mind is not already made up, the second you stand in front of the fridge, Coca-Cola have marketed that fridge so well that there's only a couple of options you're going to pick. So I struggle to fight through that. You know, the, uh, the ice cream aisle, people are much more adventurous, you know, and it's much, people are prepared to try different flavors of things. And, and that's, the ice cream has been a really, really big addition to our business. And it'll be, you know, as a, as a big part of our business now and will be, uh, you know, moving forward, but no, not in the UK yet, unfortunately. I, what I guess is the go to, what's the go to, uh, pairing of the, for a float of your ice cream and Ooh. the original line? Oh, uh, oh, the cream soda, use the cream soda ice cream anyway. Cause it's, um, and then oh, I wait a minute wait there's a, a cream, cream soda, soda ice, cream. ice cream yeah yeah because oh, yeah, we, so we only saw the football special and the banana I don't know no, we cream do, soda oh. we do football banana cream soda and pineapple and the ice cream the banana ice cream is is like primo best banana ice cream you will taste um, <laughs> and then uh, the cream soda ice cream is the best one for using a float cream soda ice cream is, yeah, yeah do you fire up that Google stuff. again Al Al fire up Google again let's get some flights over to the mountain and so let's, do you are you talking about you. dumping are you talking about dumping this cream soda ice cream in an OG in a premium cola I haven't actually no I haven't used the premium lines in a soda float yet because they're you know that that is that is bougie on bougie there nice. I know, like a, you know that's what we do I mean, that's what we're all about we, that's what we're all about we're not messing uh, around mate. Seamus I was wondering as well do you have a particular favourite uh, of the premium line is there one that sticks out for you? Oh, yeah. oh, the, the football special is my favorite. The football special. Oh, 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 oh. Um, but I will say that uh, I, I, a big fan, the orange cream is, I, I'm particularly proud of the orange cream because that is a product. So orange cream, I know Andy, you mentioned as well, it's big in the United States. That's a flavor that's big. Uh, we had a fizzy orange mm -hmm. and I crossed that with an American cream soda. So I sort of, that's kind of my baby, uh, you know, so I like that one as well. I think the orange cream is unique and different. But no, the football special for me is... Yeah, yeah, yeah I definitely. Like. It was one of the things that I, I was so... Once I knew that they liked cola, I was like, they're going to love this whole range. And I was excited to bring the orange cream. And I'm excited to bring the cream soda because I, I, I'm, I'm hopeful that the guys will love that as much as I do. And I'm not even a cream soda fan. So I, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Um, yeah, I just... I just, I just yeah, ahead, we, you know, we just all we you know like so I've only just taken over the business from my dad now in the last you know year and a half or so, um, and I guess what I'm really trying to focus on is the flavors, uh, you know, the, the flavors that we produce, and then making them as good as we can possibly make them, and just you know really stretching the flavors as far as we can. So be that into doing a range of confectionery products or ice cream or or whatever we can do with the flavors because. The uniqueness of football special is that it tastes like no other soda. And there's no other, not even Coca-Cola can say that. Uh, there's plenty of things that taste like Coca-Cola. There's nothing else out there that tastes like football special. So that's my point of difference. And that's what I've got to try and, uh, and, and build a business on. I love, I love all of this, man. Uh, so what would you say is the future plans? Do you have any plans for any new products, any new flavors before we tell you what you should do? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Well, well, it's like talking to the bank manager here. It's, it's uh, I think that I mean, the next big thing we'll do is get into, we'll go into cans. Um, you know, and we'll probably do, we'll have to do a zero sugar range, which will not be up your alley. But, um, you know. We, different we'll, strokes we'll, for different folks, man. What, what, what I, you know, like I like alluded to earlier when we talked about us having to get out of plastic or sorry, having to get out of glass. You know, we're all being, we're all aware of the environmental impact that, that certain, that certain can, containers are having in the world um if i can get a glass if i can get my glass range up and running and get my cans up and running i would anticipate that 15 years from now i probably won't have a plastic bottle out on the marketplace anymore or it will certainly be a much more diminished offering that my glass my glass or my cans are much more you know environmentally conscious mm -hmm. and 
that's an environmental decision, but frankly, it's also an economic decision because that is probably where the market is going to go. And I have the opportunity now to jump there and do that. So why would you not? If you you know if you can if you can do it, why not? Yeah, I think I guess it'd be some kind of easier for you to do that as a small crafter than someone like Coca Cola who has to change these huge plants and stuff like. Because we actually shared some images into our group chat recently, and it was looking at new uh, containers, and there was a paper can coming out. It was made from paper, and, and don't get me wrong, it sounded insane, but I think there's, there's lots of stuff there to be said, the sustainability and the options you've got there as a small company to come out and kind of... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting, like, you know, ultimately, like, the the, the, the the plastic bottle is your homogenous bottle now. It, it is not going anywhere. Probably what will happen is they'll make it somehow recyclable in the next yeah. 20 years, but that pack is not going anywhere. For the simple reason, like, you see with the rise of, uh, you know, coronavirus comes along and suddenly coffee shops won't take your returnable, you know, your reusable coffee cup anymore because there's a sanitary element to using these throw out bottles. And that's kind of, that is kind of where we're going to end up unless people are prepared that it's going to be, there will be some sort of, there may be, it's not going to be as crisp as a one use one bottle. So, you know, I, I am kind of, for us as a small company, we should do this uh, and we can do it, but I think it'll be a while before the big companies really get on this. Yeah. I have two. I've got two questions actually based on these. One, if you were to go into cans, do you see yourself going up like being like a monster energy can, like a five hundred mil can, or are you in the chubby slim line as we call it, the the yeah, kind of no, fat we'll, or slim can, or a we'll, standard Coke can? We'll do the slim line cans probably. We'll probably do a slim oh, line to start with. Aesthetically and pleasing. Yep. Yeah. It's good to switch. Yeah, and plus, like, you know, I'm conscientious too, you know, that our 500 mil bottle used to be a 330 mil bottle, you know, um, and that, you know, consumer sizes and and the people are probably consuming too much of this. Like, I always say say to people out there, like, if you just buy one bottle of football special week, if everybody in the world did it, I'd have the biggest soda (laughs) cup in the world. I don't need (laughs) people guzzling this stuff down. Like, you know, I don't really want anybody doing that either. Like, so. You know, this is a treat um, and, and it should be treated as such. So, you know, that's probably if I can do a smaller can, I probably will try and do a smaller can. I like that so politician we, answer, but I will, Andy, let me go with this one okay. as well. So football special uh, or any of the drinks, have they ever been in draft? Uh, no, no, they have not. Mm. No. Is that I, something I, that you'd be interested in? I mean, I was yes. looking because I was thinking about the 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 sort of the different sort of vessels you can get a soda in recently. And I was thinking about cans versus bottles versus plastic, but I, we, we have agreed before the draft is kind of up there. If it's done correctly, with the peak carbonation, peak setup levels, next head carbonation. life. Do you know what I mean? Is, uh, is that, what, is you're, that like, you're, you're leaving a lot, you're leaving a lot to chance. I think, when things yeah. get farmed out into the draft game, you're leaving a lot of chance to chance because sometimes I'll taste draft somewhere and I'm like, is that that's, is that really Diet Coke? Yeah, you know, like you, it, it really you need is. Your gas changed. And I'm just like, let's taste that. how far down the line are we here? This is so. I think the one what we would probably look at doing as opposed to that would be the nitro. So you know, I went oh, mad. Dude. Nitro coffee has gone really big in America, and I night they have a Pepsi messed around with a Nitro Pepsi, and I thought, well, now we have a head in our product, like a Nitro football special, which should really work. But th- so that is an idea that's that's on a it's on a whiteboard in my office, um, you know. But <laughs> along with next face, <laughs> it, just says, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. it just says Nitro. I don't, I don't know why. I why don't why Nick you think that these are all that these are, I'm giving you political answers. Is, <laughs> I'm living my authentic life. What, <laughs> So I, I talked about the future. Do, do you have a do you have a flavor that you would like to do? Is there a soda that you would like to create? Uh, I would love to do a, a, a quality premium rock shandy in that glass bottle. By the way, so that was that was one that we thought about. Um, the rest of it, no, it'll be zero ranges. It'll be the next big flavors that we do. So is say. is is the term rock shandy generic? Uh, well, we would call a rock shandy just a cross between a lemon and an orange, a fizzy orange and a fizzy lemon. So, so that's, that's, that's an, an Irish thing, though. Though that's an Irish. Yeah, sort of yeah. So there was there there used to be Finch's rock shandy, and there was a couple. Of okay, products. so so club don't own the term rock shandy. I, I say that. Watch me get a solicitor's letter. <laughs> <laughs> My understanding is no. There's definitely been other rocks. If you went into a bar here, ordered rock shandy, you wouldn't necessarily get a club. Like 
yeah, right, yeah okay, okay 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 well i'd be keen to see that and did you have any any I, thoughts <laughs> I, I want a cherry soda i want a cherry cream soda in the same line that you've got your orange cream a cherry cream to me would be an absolute it's, smash yeah yeah just you need sounds like you should just move to like wisconsin or somewhere yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> get a, lot, get a lot of these but yeah i mean that's yeah that there's there is i mean america really pushes the boat the, the boat out on, on soda um and you know it is interesting to me how how developed their soft drinks business is there and like they're always pushing the pushing different flavors on there that are not as common here so you know we're actually we with the exception of iron brew like it's fairly homogenous in ireland and england and scotland it's all fairly similar so so what is what's mcdade's biggest seller like just of anything what's the biggest well, that, i mean that 500 mil football special is our, yeah. our big okay. by, by a distance like all right okay i had to just just to just to jump back a step to that that idea of andy suggesting see in terms of soda making soda and brewing soda is there what do you face any limitations or are you almost capable of doing most things that would if you take out the economic implications, if someone came in and said, it's my birthday, can you make a cherry cream soda? Is, is there anything that limits that or is it, is it a case of anything is possible? No, we, we are at the mercy of the ingredients companies. So, okay. you know, so like I said, the cola, like our cola went away because we really used a cola essence that wasn't that popular. And this, this ingredients house just said, we're not making it anymore then. You know, basically. So uh, that is where that it, it, that's kind of what you know. We're, ultimately, you might be able to find it on a small scale, but trying to get an ingredient on a bigger scale is tough. And that's where Coke and the like really show their weight. Because if if you know, there's only a certain amount of cola essence in the world. That's where the ingredients houses will move, and there's only a very very small number of ingredients houses out there. So we're at their mercy, really. Um, you know, so, yeah. So, I was doing some digging here to make his own. Interesting. Story. No, I just, that was, I just thought was wonder. That was yeah. the big difference between what, what what I found with what we do. So we bring in seven different flavors, and our guys in my syrup room blend into football special. We bring in a couple of different flavors that go into our banana, and it's blended there and then. When you go to the United States, they just give you a cream soda flavor, and they just it says on the side of the thing, add this much water and this much syrup, and away you go. And like you go to some of there, so even the guy who makes our sodas there. If you go off script, he doesn't really know what necessary to do because you know he's so indebted now to the ingredients house that that's just that's his that's his orange. Like he doesn't know any about you know yeah. anything different. So right, before we before we actually dip into to tasting the the OG the premium uh, football special, you're faced with a fridge in front of you. It's got all the drinks out there. You're not allowed to choose a McDade's. What would you choose as a soda to drink on a on just a, a normal day for your lunch break? Oh, that's it. I get, I'll, I'll say a couple. I do. I do like the Boylan's uh, ginger ale. Big fan of that. Um, and I am also a fan of if you can get the Mountain Dew uh, with the cane sugar. I do like just Mountain Dew. I feel like. I have I got. We had it. Yeah, we no, I think we, we've done that in one of our. We done that in a live election special. I'm sure. Yeah. Are you getting the score, score up? Well. Yeah, it didn't score too well from memory. Yeah, I like I like Mountain Dew. Um, and then yeah, I like that's that would be they're the two that off the top of my head. I'm saying now, if I'm picturing this, I'm grabbing them. But I will, you know, I, it's funny. Like so, like I this is we're a small town here, Melton, and like when I go to the shop on like my lunch hour, I'll try and pick up anything else. I actually drink a fair bit of Iron Brew. But I, I'm just. But like the, the looks I get from the checkout girls when I like go up <laughs> in my McDade's jacket, <laughs> buying a cherry cola, and I'm like, come on, like can I not just go ahead and have to drink this the whole time? Uh, how often are you going to uh, go into one of these shops and just packing up a McDade's football special? Well, then I feel like I have to. And I'm like, are you just like? Head? Money. Putting, that, just putting that 120 back in your pocket <laughs> my mother goes mad like my mother's always like what could you bring me out some soft drinks and I'm like no nah. she's like I feel awkward buying it in the shop have a <laughs> <laughs> right I think I think it's time I well, think it's time to, to, oh. to, to go here and to give us get a, it give out us a run, give us a rundown of the scores what did we give it last time so uh, the, the last time we, we reviewed the plastic bottle the 500ml plastic bottle football special the torpedo <laughs> Al gave it a 1.3. Nick yeah. gave it a 1.2. Uh, 
And I give it a one point six. So the, the, I, a one I don't even know why I'm out here. I don't know why. <laughs> there, was so, <laughs> there was so many factors at play that day, though. Do you not think so? A lot of things, but look, I, I'm. I just that today is about this. Today is about this, and I think McDade's. You've you've already redeemed itself by yeah. being up there at the top. Um, so I mean, I, I'm I'm looking forward to getting this. Before we do open it, before we do, crack that's it a open, nice ball. I mean, yeah. I, I, like I love the design on all of them. Is that an in-house thing? Uh, no, we use a local designer here called Laura Buchanan. Um, what we did though, I love people always. I get a lot of you know um, compliments on the label, and I would love to take full credit for it. But it is exactly what the label used to look like in the 1960s. That's so cool though. That's yeah, you know that's and Laura, and Laura, our designer. She she you know she modernized it a little bit, um, and uh, yeah, we're really really happy with how the how the. But it looks like it kind of looks is like that red and blue. Is that what we're looking at? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so you know, red, red would be so red is the color of the local of Spiller Rovers here, the football team. Um, so red and white, so they really are, are strong. Colors. Are these are they still around? Yeah, yeah, they're still around. Yeah. Do you yeah, sponsor still, them? Oh, well, we're still the official drink of them. Um, okay. You know, but just Jay. Right, don't, tell, don't tell them that. Hold on, I don't know. I don't. I, <laughs> you said like the club chairman here. Now. How much am I? How much am I right, let's go. What in. are we looking at, boys? We're not looking at a twisty. We're looking at a full on. Oh, it's a twisty. Oh, it's a twisty. Yeah, oh, it's a twisty. I still went with the thing. I went with the thing. Yeah, I'm not still going with the thing. Right. Let's get Immediately straight stuff. off the bat, there is a cream soda smell. There's a way more vanilla thing happening. Here. Yeah, there's a cream soda smell to me. Let's let's go. Let's go. I'm trying not to think of this root beer vanilla thing that he said. Hello. <laughs> it's not the same drink. Dude, that is not the same. <laughs> That's not, the same, <laughs> that's not the same thing, like. Well, now it shouldn't be that much different. So I would definitely like a steward's inquiry into what you got last time. Now, yeah, maybe we've had some. We have had some issues where we thought there was uh, tainted. The, the, the Linka was like the one we would be different from India. Different There's definitely a real creamy vanilla cream soda vibe to this. Can I? Can I? Can I guess one of the ingredients? If I get it right, will you tell me? <laughs> No, is I'm not iron brew. Just, <laughs> are you are you dumping it, in a seventh of iron brew into this? It it does it does have a bit of an iron brew vibe. It does, but cane sugar iron brew, not like a not not like a rubbishy sugar tax iron brew. It's much yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the cane sugar makes makes a makes a big difference. There's there's so many flavors in that, and I suppose you've said that you have said that there's, there's not, seven there's flavors seven. in it. There's seven, and one of them is iron brew. The other one is <laughs> cream soda. <laughs> I'm just silently swigging this in the back. What is look is it the same? Cream, is it the same cream, sort of oh, combination yeah, as the orange cream? Yes. No, look at that. You can see it. Look at the way it's clinging to the yeah. the neck of the ball. Yes. So the theory would be if you if you put the top back on it and come back in twelve hours or so, it should be as fizzy as it is now. It should take a long time to release. I wish every bottle was like that because yeah, I mean, you can see that we look. waste so much soda every week on this show just just to, yeah. so we don't end up yeah, it's I, like, I, I, I will say that it is a very 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 inefficient way to bottle something because <laughs> you have to <laughs> hours until it's ready but I'm trying to get this to focus there we go and it's it's not really picking up but the, there's so much bubble just sitting at the bottom there yeah, you can see all the yeah. yeah I think um, it's it's like a fruity vanilla Coke kind of vibe. You know? Yeah. I feel like I've tasted what it, you know, I feel like I, I get it a bit more now. Yeah. I really, f- I just, the, 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 the one before didn't really hit hard. And because you're saying this is more true to the old recipe. This is, this is the exact recipe as it would have been back in. So w- when, see, when did the other recipe change? Was that a sugar tax thing or is that? Uh, it, it's more, it's slowly over the years changed very slightly. So all very small jumps, like, you know, it was all very, and it was just, yeah, some of it is sugar tax related. Some of it is just the market changes, you know, certain products are the same ingredients are harder to get and it just slightly evolves. Just to be clear as well, you prefer this to the 500 ml plastic bottle? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And if, you know, okay. I was going to, you know, we, this is our, you know, this is our, we, this is what we send out to meet the meet people. This is the okay. good stuff. But 
Like again, to be fair, <laughs> switch. Always saying, no, then the old fucking Boston switch, man. Yeah. <laughs> but this does not sell as well as the other stuff, and I still really, really like the other <clears> stuff too. No, so I, th- I mean, again, I think that comes down to marketing. You, it's just this is a different thing. That, this, the, the other one is Sunday. Le- the other one is Sunday League, man. This is this is Premiership champions, stuff. Champions, champions, yeah, League. Champions League stuff. Is, is, there so, is there something game? to be said though that if you're moving in it, not give you business advice, right? But if you're moving into like uh, this range of zero sort of stuff, that this becomes your full, full whack sugar, and then the, all the other stuff becomes zero to an extent. Mm. Yes, um, yeah, that's great advice, and that's this, yes. It, there's a strong chance of that. And the thing that always I always go so we I do spend a bit of time in Glasgow with the bit of sales that we do there and it amazes me how iron brew have an iron brew diet an extra uh you know they're regular then they'll have their original uh you know and they'll have it all on the shelf so and i kind of get uh, in many ways i just copy a lot of what they do so i think that if i have you know 25 products that are all sort of just slightly different i think i'll probably land then on the one that it ends up being but yes there's a chance that if we have this Mm. range Zero sugar, and we've nothing in between. The, yeah. the reason I'm asking is because if if the 500 plastic bottle said zero somewhere on it, or like football special extra or something, and it said on it <coughs> zero calories, I could kind of for not forgive because it's not my place to forgive, <laughs> but like yeah, I, I would be more like okay, I can see what's happened here versus tasting this. There, for me, there is a complete in the same way the diet coke. And Coca Cola is a completely different product. This mm. is how this. I know you're telling me it's the same thing, but taste wise, it's it's but an, this, it's, this is it's not in another this, league. It's just a different product. It's a different. Drink. This is balls to the ball. Everything turned up to eleven. This is what it's. This I, is what's I, happening. Every time I taste it, I feel like I'm getting something else. Um, Do you know what, and, what I'm also enjoying is though, and just to add to the intrigue. Every sip, I'm trying to place flavors. The fact yeah. that I can't just keeps me coming back. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's always yeah. We uh, we enjoy that. Yeah, we we get we get a lot of guesses, a lot of a lot of things. I'm getting cream soda, cherry, maybe a bit of cola, but I'm really not sure. There's definitely that might, on it. Tastes like crack, man. That's what it tastes like. So <laughs> I'm going out there in a limb. Um, you going in? I go. Uh, do you know what? Let me let, no. Let me get. I'm going to finish this. I'm actually. I'm I'm pounding it. Which gives you some yeah. indication of where my score N- might Nick's land. Nick's finished his already, but it looks like it. You pounded that? Nah, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting, oh, I thought you were getting there. Um, the, Shame is, are, are you able to sort of like score this without just saying five? <laughs> uh, no, I think I'll let you guys score it. I'll let you, <laughs> I'll, I'll hand it over. You are the experts in this. You are self-proclaimed. I, self-proclaimed and what, you know, I just, I love Nick. As you said, you can't be bought. Like, you're not getting a sponsor from Weedabix because you're a rand. You're not me because you score. You know, you know uh, you can't be bought. So you're all right. Involved. I'm so, willing to. I'm willing to go in, Andy. Uh, I, I'll, I'll, you go I'll, in, I'll, I'll, I'll go last. And I've got a wee. I, I'm. It's an important drink. It's an important review. So, and I want to just outline a wee bit about how we review. It's about the quality of soft drink, but it's also about personal taste. Now, if you put this. McDade's premium football special next to the McDade's cola and you ask me which one I want it's the cola but just that's I'm more inclined but in terms of this being a very well made exotic fruit mystery it's right there so I'm just the, the 500 bottle mill plastic no it's dead to me that's <laughs> this is what's happening. This is this is my lane. It that should have never crossed my me. desk. But this is what this is what's happening. It's a I'm gonna give it a four point zero. I'm gonna give it a four point zero. <laughs> um, I I've got to agree. Like I I'm always choosing the cola. So I, if I've got a case of the Coke, the orange cream, and the football special, the other two are getting demolished. And maybe twice as fast as I would go through the football special, but there's something about it that as soon as somebody comes into the house, I'm like, no, you got to have this. You got to taste this, and that's why we always say, if you get above a three, you're recommending this. You get above a four, you're 
your Hall of Fame, you're like, that's that's the one that we're putting that in a box and shipping it to our mates at Christmas kind of thing. Like, you got to try this. And there's, there's no doubt about it that that is a got to try. It is 100% a got to try. And I do need to score it slightly less than the cola. And I gave the cola a 4.0, so I'm going to give this a 3.9. Which leaves it to the Dark Destroyer. <laughs> And he's frozen mid sip. <clears throat> I think where I agree with those guys, I disagree in some things because it is doing the same thing in terms of the carbonation. The bottle, the whole thing looks good. It's beautiful. A cola probably isn't my go to, to be honest. And, and I do feel like while there is a bit of a cola element to this, if it was a blind test, I wouldn't be able to tell you it was cola flavoured. But it, so it kind of then puts me in this kind of fruity category and it, or that kind of somewhere in that sort of red cola kind of vibe. Mm. Do you know, weirdly, it just sorry to interrupt here, Nick. I was going to say it puts it very much in a Dr. Brown's category for me. And do you know that, Al, you gave Dr. Brown's a four and I gave it a 3.9. Yeah. It's, which is exactly what we've just it's done. Got its own, but the only thing um, about Dr. Brown's is it tells you on the can what they're trying to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, you know what I mean? She's a, well, she's I a mysterious, mine. She's a, she's a mysterious well, lady. Go, I, I'm this. probably a swig off, so. I finished mine. So, I'm not apologising for the other one, Seamus, but I'm going to say that this for me is a 4.2. And I think it's, I think it's better than the orange and the cola. Actually. Really? Only I because actually, I don't. That I don't makes think sense I'd ever for you. Go out my way for a cola, and I don't You're think I'd right, ever go out yeah. my way for an orange. And I would, I would dabble with this. I, I think can I just can I, can I just say you oh well. gave the co- you gave the cola and the orange a four point two as well. Oh, oh, well, there you go. Then. I'm not changing my score, but four no, 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 definitely. Wait a um, sat. That gives McDade's. Football special, Football special, the original, a 4.0. Straight there you go, up into the Hall of Fame. It goes unbelievable. Once I'm relegated, now they're back. <laughs> wow. It's, it's, I'll, it's get, the I'll, get, I'll get the checks out to you in the morning, boys. <laughs> Seamus, I've got to say thank you very much for coming on. Uh, thanks for giving up your time for us. We've, we've taken well over an hour of your time, although we've only been here for 50 minutes. Um, I can't wait to bring the other drinks on board for the guys to taste. I really hope that once we're allowed to travel, we can come out to the Melton. We want to film a little bit out there and, and get involved in that kind of scene of it. Um, and I, I just th- thank you again. Yeah, no, that, listen, thanks a million. And I, I loved what you guys are doing. And if there is, for the locals who are listening to you guys, Check out our website. It'll show you where in Glasgow you can buy this, and check out Glencrest Cash and Carry as well. So you know, if it, is there any? Well, yeah, what other leads did you have? What's Andy? What's what are you seeing as the best spots? Glencrest. Glencrest, Glencrest is the only. Glencrest spot. is the best. It's, it's the, the only, only spot. The only okay. spot. Yeah, Seamus, thank you very much. Hi, uh, everybody. We're going to go and we're going to now go and drink our three drinks to try and put up against it. They've got no chance. Uh, thank you once again. Are the other three, or do we have to wait until the show is out? No, you we can do it. No, I suppose we could say. Well, I mean, we've got Lucasaid Energy, the old school in a can Lucasaid Energy. Right, okay, yeah, that's 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 that's. that's I, enjoy, I enjoy that the odd time. Then we've got a couple of weird ones. We've got Barbican pomegranate malt drink. Right. Nice. Uh, yeah. And then this oh, Japanese this Japanese pink cola. Oh yeah, they yeah. There's, I mean, there's a bit of honor, there's a bit of honor among us uh, soft drinks makers. So uh, all I can say is they're all wonderful products. <laughs> good, good luck to them. Good luck to them. Seamus, thank you once again. Uh, hopefully, on, we get man. to speak to you again soon. And uh, I'll say good luck to banana and cream soda that have still to come. And hopefully, we'll get the other flavors on soon as well. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks, many guys. Great yeah, thanks, Seamus. Bye. Thank you, mate. Cheers. Right, we, we'll cut that there, Seamus. Um, so I thanks for joining us and I enjoy go off and enjoy your night. Yeah, no, no thanks for left it. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, man. See you soon. All right, see you now. Appreciate Goodbye. it, buddy. Take Good care. Man. 
So yet another McDade's, Ooh. another McDade's, making it up there onto the Hall of Fame. The that four point O's and above. That was a special I, moment. I really didn't want him. I feel like I all, I can all. It was all in my hands there as well. And I, I want to, I want to say that I wasn't bought. Seamus did not uh, send me a huge check in the mail the other day to make sure. <laughs> Even got a hoodie. Never mind a check. Tell you something, though, right? Something that I, 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 I garnered from that. I mean, there was lots of interesting talking points. He seemed well versed in the podcast. For Actually, sure. very much so that he he did kind of make a joke about a picture of my face, but not in the canteen. Mm. And I was kind of not a joke, mate. Maybe that was joke. stepping into the lines then. Yeah. Tell you something, he, he's he knew the quote off by heart. He's a geezer. I like that guy, man. No doubt he about knew, it. I mean, he knew the quote off by heart, right? It was like, he, it, what is that I said about the drink? It was like, uh, it's it's not, not, it's he not celebrate. celebrating with us. He comes straight at it. I mean, but yeah, you cut deep. Clearly, he's passionate about his brand, and I, I love that about it. Um, I didn't show you that. I was like, what, what do you want to yeah, show you? <laughs> came I, had the, like, I had the glasses ready with the, with the wee fag hanging out my mouth. <laughs> 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 What's the thing, the thug life thing? Um, but still, I mean, three three for three of McDade's originals in the Hall of Fame is not anywhere we expected that to be after tasting the first uh, McDade's original cola. And I, I really, really hope we can get out there to... Remelton and see the, see the 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 home, the spiritual home. For sure, what I would like to do is maybe part of if we do go out to Remelton or when we go out to Remelton, I'd like to do like you know like the Pepsi Max challenge thing. Aye. I'd like to do that with like like a football special plastic bottle and football special glass bottle, and have people tell me if it's the same drink. <laughs> <laughs> not if it tastes better. Just is this the same drink? Because not we do it on the street blind that, taste test. Yeah, Seamus looked me in the eyes tonight and said, it's the same ingredients apart from the sugar content. And, and I'm just looking, I'm going, You're crazy, crazy man. It just lets you know that when you see that, that <coughs> in sugar, sugar on the side of the bottle, you're right to get excited. Yeah, it makes such a difference. I think you're, so, you're, you're on something though. Because do you remember high school chemistry when they would, they would go about, right, what's your hypothesis? To prove that soda tastes better in a glass bowl and with cane sugar. It's like, okay, what we're going to do is take the exact same ingredients and literally the only thing we're changing is how it's carbonated, how it's stored, and uh, the, and uh, adding in sugar as opposed to any other flavor, like other kind of like... The thing is, the cane sugar one's interesting because in the UK, it's not like we're, we're using cane sugar. We must just be like subsidizing it now. Like the cane sugar? cane sugar in the UK, though. Well, thank you. Let me let me not to go way off topic, right? But like cane sugar is a big thing in America because high fructose corn syrup is the substitute. Yeah, that is like the it's actually like the most common sweetener in America. So when we but like we are using sugar over here, it's just that with the sugar tax now we're using much lesser. We're mm. like, and I think we are now making that up with additives and stuff. I might be wrong, but like, yeah, I think the UK, especially with his secret, not not so secret past of uh, slave trade and <laughs> importing sugar and whatnot, but like we, like we were never. Uh, even if you think about your old history classes when they would talk about like rationing sugar, was all, like we were always able to get sugar here for an island that doesn't grow sugar. Like I don't think the UK has ever had that issue, but the it is interesting that. The cane sugar is like a sort of marketing thing now as well and it's also interesting that um, going full on with the sugar and not having to worry about taxes or maybe like Seamus even pointed out that people it's not recommended that people tan these drinks and if it's in a plastic bottle in the shops in every corner of Remelton like it's, it's because it's more available and it's got some history there like people are more likely to just grab a bottle of it for dinner and lunch times and stuff. Whereas this is, like you're saying, it's a bit more premium. It's got a bit more thought in it. But I find it very interesting going to that chemistry thing. That if that's all they've changed, what a huge difference it makes. Because if he's if he's fully honest with us, and the the only difference is the glass bottle, how it's bottled, and the sugar uh, increase is is 
game changing. I would love there's, to see there's another. There's going to be another that's, huge difference there, though, and that's the water. I was American be, water. Yeah, and don't get me wrong. I would have been. I would have said that would have made it worse. Yeah, so right. but that, that's going to be a big difference to the taste of that. Don't you think that maybe for a, yeah, I suppose I was going to say, Jing, there's a filtration process for the water though. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe that's what. What's my hands? We'll get him on next time. It was I liked when he said. I liked when he said that him and his dad went out there with the ingredients, and I was like, Aye. I kind of thought they were on the plane and had the briefcase. <laughs> the briefcase has the handcuff on it. Uh-huh. And it has like A, B, C, and D. That, that was my favourite bit, just knowing that the, the ingredients are just marked A, B, C, and that D. That's money. That's so good. 70% A, 10% B, it laughs. Unreal. The heat when he's like, oh, we just went, we just went in that factory and just, you know, I mean, he's Take in over. the last. That's just how we're doing it. <laughs> and then I bet they, I, honestly, I mean, the guys in America must have tasted the finished product. I mean, like, oh, we. <laughs> These are you know what? One thing that I never asked, I actually want to ask, like, because he, he said the name of the the, the bottling company. Used, mm. I wonder what else they produce there. Be interesting to see if mm. that is a that is this cut the the spiritual home of soda. That Seamus is definitely going to watch us. Uh, his ego definitely not let him not watch it. <laughs> the uh, I think we, let's let's have our like now he's not here. Let's have our best guess of what we think is in that. Cream definitely soda. cherry. Cream soda and a cherry. There's a cherry in there. There's a cherry. I wasn't hundred percent getting cherry, but I definitely think he's not like. I'm the only not... one with still some left. Oh yes, yeah, I, I, I think there's like citrus in it somewhere because it gets yeah, in the can... back in the tongue. There's like a kind of orangey lime, rock shandy vibe going on, like hidden. Um... There's, a, there's a spice though. There's a dark spice as well. Do you know what that might like? be the cola? That might be the cola. Let me, it's a flaming, let me be it's a flaming more. Let me be functional. Yes, Al. Yes. Let me it's be functional more, here. Maybe. Let's let's say for example, you are bottling in America, and uh, Seamus already alluded to the fact that perhaps it's not so easy to get all these flavors. Mm. They do make a wide variety of flavors in the OG. They got cola, they got the orange cream, they got banana. Is it just all of them? It. It's a fucking mix. It's a, a mix up. minus the cost it's syrup. A, it's a ten p mix up, like the. I think there's a wee bit of everything in there. Yeah, I never thought about this. Maybe this is this will be one one of these like deep dive Simpsons things. See the flaming mo, and the secret ingredient is cough syrup. Mm-hmm. Is that a commentary on like like people drinking like lean, like putting codeine in with Sprite and all that? <laughs> I, mean, I never thought about this. <laughs> a dark like, turn to the end of the podcast. Yeah, yeah. That's like, <laughs> but that's like people. I mean, like. That's like, it's pretty much exactly what Mo's doing. He's chucking some in. He's like, the secret ingredient is the kids' cough syrup. Now, I'm not saying kids' cough syrups get codeine, but that's not too much of a stretch. When you talk to that guy, we need to go back to Seamus and, and, and look at... cough syrup not, in it. Oh, are, we, are, we, like, are we suggesting that Cal Paul goes in the other drink? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think like, I'm not I'm not sure I fully like guess the thing, but I do think that it's definitely cola in it. There's definitely cream soda wouldn't be surprised if there wasn't a bit of the orange cream in it. Like that's just me. It's got a wee bit. I think there might even be ginger in there because it, sometimes it just catches the chest a wee bit the same way a ginger, a fiery ginger beer can. He says he likes a ginger beer, doesn't he? So I think there's got to be a ginger in there. I think it's, it's very good and it's very different. And it's it's not it, for people that say it's like iron brew. I know I kind of mentioned that, but it's not really. It's uh, <laughs> why would you? Anyway, Stop let's this, let's man. let's just end it on that. Like, what what are you taking up the road? Because you can't take McDade's now because you've tanned it. Wow, well, I'm taking. I'll take. I'll take, I'll I'll take him up the road. I'll take the Sakura. <laughs> oh, the oh, what's left? I would I would actually take the Sakura as well. Yeah, the other two are barking. Just because I think if I stick it on eBay, I may be able to make something. <laughs> like how, how would you feel uh, if we we invited Seamus back at some point? Oh, 100%. 100%. Like, 100%. Maybe when we do that yeah, live show. We do that oh, live mate. show and we bring that cream soda on because that cream soda is that's got I mean the banana has got some that's got some I was more just thinking we should send them a care package and let them for coming on the show do a full episode, the, episode. Man, that'd be dope man yeah man, I, maybe, gonna, maybe we don't even we don't even put him dates on his episode no man just let him because he's a he said he's into he likes to get his beak wet with other other soft drinks man so yeah that, that'd be good man I think more stories about the, the, the <gasps> sports agency stuff. We missed we missed it this year, but we, you know we need to do Super Bowl special. Aye. Yes. Now that we know that, now that we know that, it's that's got that's got to be done. That's a shout. 
That's it. Okay. Um, Bye, guys. Right. I mean, we, we have been going for quite a while. It was a long, good long interview there with Seamus. Um, I enjoyed it. Hopefully you all enjoyed it as well. We'll be back again next week with more. Uh, but that is it for episode 14 of Five Star Sodas. We'll see you again next time. Mm-hmm.